I went by your house, what a big mistake. But for a while I thought that I wouldn't break. I need something else to clear my head. Someone to tell me how to live instead. Just open your eyes and take my advice. Stop rolling the dice and just compromise. It's the chance of your life. another Bellas patch everybody PTR 1.36.1 version 2 and yeah it's a bit of a different mood here today than it was last Thursday when we got the first iteration uh, we saw this I guess we're all a pretty excited be pretty surprised but first of all we're all here I'm Neil of course welcome and when we discuss patches balance statistics I need this guy by my side. Hey, Dondo. Hello. This uh, this feels weird, huh? Yeah, it, cool. <laughs> it does. I did not expect this. Um, we were here on Thursday when the PTR dropped out of nowhere. And the discussion was, do we need an emergency stream? And we did. And yeah. apparently people are listening. Yeah, uh, they are. It's uh, both uh, and like uh, that's good to hear. It's also a bit spitting in a way, but that's. Uh, I mean, it's only positive that they actually bring in feedback. Um, so yeah, I think that's like a positive all all around. Uh, and all they also introduce now how long they're gonna. From what I saw, how long they're gonna take feedback? Yes. Uh, it was till end of November, I think they said. Yes. Which I think is really good. So we know like what time limit we have to give proper feedback and stuff. Do you know? Which is really good how many stones fell off of my heart when I saw that this will not be introduced prior to Rara Land? I uh, feel a, a, a couple, I would <laughs> think. You, you don't want it patched like with breaking with 3 c uh, on the day of Rara, you say? I don't get why well, that so, would be a problem. I like chaos, but that was a little bit too much. So I feel a hundred kilograms lighter around uh, that area. But yeah, um, did we gather all the people? I think so. So as always, I... Do I start with this negative already? I think I do. As always, I don't like the format of these patch notes too much because what you will be seeing uh, right now is oftentimes values compared to the previous PTR and not values compared to the live version. I have prepared an Excel uh, sheet already that lists all three things, live version, PTR1, PTR2, but... First and foremost, we look what the PTR update is, and I'm going to read that um, as neutral as possible, and then we'll discuss it once again, one by one, with our reaction, if we like it, if we don't like it. So hopefully you're not getting too confused. We try to clear everything up afterwards. 
It is Tuesday, it is October 24, and we got a little bit of a gift by Blizzard Entertainment because they updated the PTR nodes. We were all a bit shocked last week. This, on first impression, seems a lot better. There were a couple of bugs on the PTR um, that was changed. For example, items displayed the incorrect strings. It always displayed purchase heal potion for example but it didn't show what it actually does so that's a win that this is fixed fixed also an issue where the reduced cost of raise that did not apply after the player got skeleton mastery um, that is also applied we've seen this before with headhunters and berserkers classic blizzard bug that was changed now but the most important things the nitty gritty the edit and modified balance changes Militia duration, apparently the 42... 42- One question, Neo. Yes. I'm just, I'm just going to do this immediately. Should we maybe just do it from the master log so we see what the values are now? Because, I mean, we can compare if you want to, but then we have everything, like, as the values are set. Because these are the modified, and then this only added modified, but the master change would give you the full list of everything. As oh, this. okay. I think that uh... might be better. I mean, I don't... Both works, but don't, you don't have to repeat yourself, in a way. That is correct. All right, so let's start this again for YouTube. Good, uh, good <laughs> suggestion there, no worries. Okay, sorry for the repetition. We do this for YouTube. Um, we are here on October 24 and we got another PTR update. Blizzard is listening and is adjusting a ton of what they proposed last week with the first PTR update. First and foremost, they fixed a p- couple of bugs um, that they introduced with the PTR. So item descriptions are fixed and also the cost of raise dead is fixed, which wasn't the case before. Let's go into this. A couple of things, I think we start with this one. A couple of things reverted and that is first and foremost the movement speed of heroes. Uh, They reduced the slow heroes from 290 to 280 uh, back where they are and I think everyone except AKM was against the movement speed change. They reverted all of that so that's a thing of the past and also a thing of the past is the meme new item that was the rusty mining pick the bash item um, is no longer dropping on the drop table and I think uh, that is will also get universal praise. Now to the changes. The militia duration uh, was addressed in the previous PTR was buffed from 40 to 40. 2.5 seconds apparently that wasn't enough and we revert the militia time to uh, back where it was a couple of years ago the full 45 seconds back bash is also addressed they did this before on the ptr uh, currently the flat damage of bash is 25 and now they buff it to 25 50 and 100 even stronger than on the first PTR, but they address two other things as well this time, and that is the bash duration from a flat two, uh, respectively one on heroes, to two, four, and six seconds on units, and one, two, and three seconds for heroes. That definitely uh, will be talked about, but the chance of bash gets reduced from 20, 30, and 40% to 25% flat. Big change for bash. Very curious what the humans think about this. The most outrageous change was Devotion Aura to 3.5 and 5 seconds on the live patch. Was buffed to 3, 6 and 9 armor on the first PTR. And now they find the middle ground again with 3, 4 and 6 armor value. Still strong. A change proposed here on the stream by our friend Save Orcas was to increase the food that the human main building is giving and they listened. Uh, the keep, the tier 2 building from 12 to 14 food and the castle even from 14 to 16 food. Hello Blizzard, apparently you're watching. Talent cost still in. Immolation activation cost increased not from 1 to 5 but from 1 to 10 this time. And also the damage of Immolation reduced on level 1 by 0.5. That results in 1 damage per second less. Uh, I think they have to change the Immolation activation cost accordingly, but they probably will do that. Blink stays the same as on the first PTR. Um, Fan of Knives has been addressed as well. 
is still stronger. The damage cap makes more sense now. Uh, the damage cap has been buffed from 4 units 5-5 five, five to 5-6 five, and 7 and will still do 75 per target. Is that the right way to do it? We'll discuss this. Bears get more mana for uh, when they get out of the lore from 100 to 110. Mana flare range, which is the ability of the fairy dragons when they damage uh, units that are casting a spell, reduced by 100, making it harder to position them. Undead, the dreadlord keeps the spike carapace updates from before, raise dead, cripple and skeleton mastery all the same as before, Narub tower also same as before, but <sighs> abomination collision size reduced from 48 to 40, uh, that makes them less clunky, same goes for the turn rate that was adjusted, uh, increased from 0.4 to 0.5, the different route for the crypt fiend, uh, where the turn rate was increased from 0.5 to 0.6. What this means, we'll discuss it later. Bladestorm a little bit weaker from 110, uh, not to 160, to 140, still a buff, but a weaker buff than before. Everything else stays as the same, except the headhunters who get addressed now, they get hit points back up to 375. I really hope Blizzard uh, also did this for the troll berserkers. Neutral heroes, Fire Lord gets a buff, finally he's getting addressed. Incinerate doesn't cost 6 mana anymore, but 2. Basically you get 3 for 1 here in that regard. Lava spawns split faster after not 12 hits anymore, but 9. And Volcano damage increased from 100 to 150. Items. Circlet is still the same on the lower tier uh, of the drops, Tome of Retraining, two charges as before, but also the Staff of Teleportation, two charges in the shop, as we were wishing here on the stream. Plus, not only is the circlet now on level two with the gloves and the claws, but also the crystal ball. <laughs> that is quite interesting, and we'll <laughs> see how that goes. And uh, creeps have also been adjusted. The Dark Troll Trapper, Ice Troll Berserker and Ice Troll High Priest get their movement speed reduced. That is, for example, important on springtime, if I'm not mistaken. Same also goes for the Assassin. Dodo, first impression on the PTR2. Uh, well, I can I can reveal that a lot of this feels uh, somewhat uh, recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think it's, it's, I mean, we can be fair to say that a lot of these things have been in a document that I've compiled, not all of it, a lot of it is also very different, but uh, some of it have, I've definitely recognized before. Yeah, we already mentioned that. I also, I think I should say this immediately, by the way, me and Save Orcas have, because we thought it was a few full emergency, right, after the first PTR. So we thought, okay, we need to, like, update the original document that we sent to Blizzard. In, and like try to give that more attention to give some like okay this is a maybe not even if the ideas are good but this is a good idea to look at it and save orcas did a lot of work in getting um a lot of feedback from several pro gamers so they could like say agree disagree to like try to help us a bit in the direction and the idea still is to present this tomorrow <laughs> So this came as a bit of a shock that it suddenly just changed a lot of stuff like in between those two iterations, I guess. So, I mean, this will be a reaction. I think we should, I will go a lot more into detail on stuff, maybe on some stuff tomorrow, because then we'll do like, but I've, it's going to be like a bit uh, confusing now. But yeah, I mean, so to me, like in general, this, a lot of this feels, uh, um, feels pretty relatable. I think a lot of them are good. We maybe have to talk some bit, a bit of values, and there are like some things we need to maybe make counteract a bit, etc., etc. But uh, we can we can talk about it. I think it's good, and yeah. then we'll do a even probably even more deep dive tomorrow with a lot of other stuff as well. Yeah. Exactly, that was planned uh, for tomorrow, as Dondo said. Um, well, they are they are faster than we thought they would be, so that's good. But they can still learn uh, from what we present tomorrow, of course. Um, for me, first impression, after I was furious, got big anxiety, and was really, really frustrated with, with what we ha have been confronted with last week, this feels like a huge win. 
Uh, not everything, of course. It's 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 not a one hundred percent home run, um, but a lot of stuff is a lot better. And I guess we discuss every single line now, shall we? That's that's what we do, as they say. <laughs> Militia duration, forty five seconds. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be a very requested change for a lot of human players. I already said that I'm not sure that it's entirely needed, but... It, like, it does, of course, increase the early game power of humans, so I think it needs to be taken into account, especially, like, given game balance against human or undead and orc already. But uh, this has been, like, a super requested change for a long time, so I'm I don't, I'm don't, not surprised that it go, uh, like, they've gone through with it. Um, it does help with... Uh, the, for instance, like first hero variety, which uh, he, militia is like the militia time is a lot more important for MK first, for instance, than it's for AM first. So I, in that sense, I think it's like universally good. Maybe you need to think about it, like how this would work for human early game balance, six especially. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to decipher without looking at all the changes in context. Correct. I'm a bit surprised about this. Um... I feel like nobody was complaining about the 42.5 second buff. Um, it kind of tells me that they think that they nerfed human on the second version substantially, that they have to give another buff to something, and they decided that it's militia. Um, it also tells me that they really don't want to touch towers, because that is not addressed. Um, yeah. Yeah. That seems Maybe. to be the solution. I don't think it can hurt a lot, but I'd rather see the 42.2, but that uh, point, point 0.5, but that's just a gut feeling of me. Yeah, the interesting thing is that uh, this could, like, this was kind of how Blizzard used to do when they kind of refused to do numbers that were not perfectly even. Uh, yep. But they have introduced non perfectly even numbers later. So um, so that's not the thing. I mean, yeah, uh, I think uh, we'll put like the human early game more into a context in general tomorrow. But uh, I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's not a surprising change, I would say, at least, if nothing else. What did surprise me is almost a rework of Bash, if we want to uh, say so. More yeah. damage, more, more and, no, more stun or even stun, but later levels, longer stun, but um, less percentage for that bash. Yeah, I mean, so I have to do the math here if this is actually like on average an increase in how much you stun, because uh, you have to do like the length of time and how uh, uh, and how like uh, how uh, likely it is to happen. But one thing I can say, like I can give immediate impact on is that it now makes, if you go a higher level bash, it goes from uh, either a ability that does not like proc or procs and it's like super good. So yeah. uh, that that makes it a bit wonky and very risky, I would say, in this current, like this suggested implementation. 100 damage plus three seconds stun. It's not that often you go level three bash. So let's just like, of course, that's pretty rare in general. But 100 damage and 3 seconds stun on a hero, that's insane. Like, And he has a Stormbolt as well in, in the backhand. <laughs> you hit you hit Stormbolt, he's stunned for, I don't even know the time anymore. Uh, and then the second he's like almost getting out of Stormbolt, he gets bashed for 3 more seconds and 100 bonus damage. Yeah. I think intuitively that just sounds insanely strong. It's probably situational, because then you would need to go level 3 bash, you don't do it that often. But... Uh, I think this sum is that it's too strong. I think I don't like stuns that last that long in general. Maybe it's not maybe it's not that bad for units. I'm kinda of like thinking maybe it's okay that level three bash is like almost guaranteeing a kill on a unit because it's a level three skill for a level seven hero probably. But uh, the hundred bonus damage with the stun for heroes kinda of becomes a bit too much. So maybe Reduce, don't like if you're going to do this big stun on units, remove the bonus damage and don't keep that stun on heroes. Not three seconds, that's too long. I agree. Um, we discussed the power level of a disable at length when they introduced the mining pick, and here they bring it in again. Um, not a fan. We've been through this with keepers and entangle. We've been through stun durations that were too long with Impale as well. Be careful 
with stuns, please. I still don't feel anyone thinks that Bash is weak. I see that 40% Bash chance is maybe crazy. Um, maybe even it out a little bit, make it 25, uh, 20, 25, 30, but therefore a little bit more damage. But the stun duration, guys, is insane and will lead to ridiculous situations when we rather want to reduce RNG and make things fun a different way because this will 100% lead to frustration because there's no counterplay to it except stay out of range, which is tough when that hero also has a storm bolt. So don't, yeah. don't do it. I agree. I think it's, I mean, it's just too strong. It's, and it's, it's, it makes it even, since it also reduces bash chance, like how you said, it becomes very situational now. So it's either going to be a super frustrating or even at times it might feel underwhelming the times it doesn't proc, right? So... Uh, yeah. I mean, I might be insane, but didn't most people just feel Bash was okay as was? I mean, maybe yeah. we don't even need to change it. I think that's like the default here. Just keep it as it was. I think that's fine. Maybe, I mean, if you're going to keep bonus damage, maybe, maybe, if anything, maybe it's okay that level 3 Bash like procs more damage, but not more stun. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's talk uh, Devotion Aura, or as we called it, Divine Aura, on, after the PTR1. Um, they find, or they think this is the sweet spot in the middle between the current version and the absolutely insane armor values that they introduced Thursday. 3, 4, and 6 armor for Devotion Aura. Is that an okay level now? I think it's hard to say. I mean, that's also like another ability I just think is okay as is. Uh, and I even think maybe like 3 at level 1 feels strong already in my head. Um, so yeah, maybe just like, yeah, if you if they really insist on buffing it, you can go even, even more conservative, give 2.5, 5.5. I mean, it's, it's, it's very good already. I feel like if you're going to uh, buff it, just buff it very slightly, if anything. The I thing think... is, like, it's it's a built that is hard to balance between being... If you want to force it as a choice, then you need to make it very good, probably, because people still want to go Divine Shield. But you also make it such a good ability, the rare cases you get, like, high-level Devotion Aura, if you get the armor yeah. too high. So, yeah. I also feel like I have to repeat myself here. Um, this will buff human in the late game against physical damage. When there are armor values are already very, very good with updates or with upgrades um, and potentially enough fire. And human doesn't need that. They are the late game army composition. They have the strongest late game if it's the ultra, ultra late game. If you have everything uh, that the race has to offer. And this is not necessary. They need help in the beginning, but definitely not at the end. They struggle, of course, against um, non-physical damage like spell and whatever crit is um, or these these ultimate thingies but not with this this makes a strong characteristic of a race even stronger when there is very little counterplay to it especially for orcs we raise the or we we try to warn that orcs can't deal with human mass air anymore because bad riders can never scale while griffins and dragonhawks can absolutely scale and then it's just ridiculous so i'd still scratch this um same as for the bash it's not necessary and potentially game breaking yeah i think it's like it's less potential to be game breaking at this levels of course but i still think it's i mean it's too good still i mean it's uh it's, it should be very good reasons to buff good abilities basically and I think there's might there might be a disconnect here between us and the developers in their interpretation that they might see like that people don't go a lot of devotion aura, and here therefore it's not a good spell. It's just that the pala has two other very good spells that he yeah. kind of wants to go first. Yeah. So we last uh, week we had save Orcas here, and he proposed this change here. Keep there's gives... a there's a funny thing here though. Can I just say it immediately? Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. He didn't mean that castle and keep should have two each. <laughs> he said that keep and castle should just increase food from 12 to 14. So uh, you don't get like additional two more food by castle, if, if I interpret 
they work as correctly. But uh, yeah, the idea here was that it gives you 50 food with uh, farms instead of 48 food, which can be a bit annoying when you go one base and like streamlines one base human a bit more without giving a lot of buff to expo human. So it gives like a very, very small incentive to play more one base. So that's the way, that's the idea behind it. Yeah. Um, so are these numbers correct is the question. Um, each farm... You should, yeah, yeah. there should say keep and castle increase food from 12 to 14. So you don't need the additional two more for castle, basically, would be the way I would look at it. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, to be honest, but uh, it's still... Uh, Still like unnecessary <laughs> to keep two more food for no reason. I mean, it kind wait doesn't doesn't it help if you have castle and an expansion and then you need a farm less? It would give you one farm less. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do think one farm less matters a lot more when you go one base than two bases, of course, because you usually go like a lot of farms to block stuff at the expo, etc. But yeah. Okay, so but, uh, with that, you would need. Seven farms now instead of eight with castle tech and an expansion. Uh, but yeah, in general, I like it. Um, maybe the castle doesn't need that necessarily, uh, but the keep increase was very good. It's a simple change. Um, it's a small change. It's quality of life because you can't go over 50 so easy anymore. Um, it also saves you a couple of resources. This is a very, very smart change if if implemented correctly. Yeah, you know, I feel like this is like a very, um, it's like usually a very game developy kind of way of thinking of stuff, right? So farms that are unique, they do give less food. They're also cheap and they can scout everywhere to quote cars. <laughs> Fix farms. Uh, yep. But uh, but this also gives you like that 50 perfect food uh, count, which is also, uh, since the game mechan mechanics are so around low upkeep, I, this is just like, yeah, it's very, very, like it has to be a trade, a very small change, but a nice change. Yeah. yeah. Okay then, Night Elves, Talon, stay the same. Immolation, you are the doctor of immolation, immolation. Uh, do a doctor immolation. Um, the activation cost is now 10 and level one does 0.5 damage less per tick. Okay. <laughs> Here uh, we go. <laughs> so I, I mean, I felt like five uh, mana was a good direction for to make it more of um, uh, decision making when activating or not. And I think maybe 10 if five or ten is the best value, you can probably argue. Um, I think it, if you just increase it by ten, it probably probably needs to be met with some other changes. We can come back to maybe tomorrow actually, because I don't think they're included here. Uh, so I don't. I think that's like in general a good thing that emulation now actually has a trade off for activation. I think that's just like good uh, design concept. Uh, I can say that those damage values. Uh, I know who wrote those damage values at some point. But I'm not sure they needed it? anymore. It was me. It was ah. me, Neo. I kind like from what we've seen lately, even Human Idol. I think I think it's still like the, it's still like a thing where the Demon Hunter can become a bit too oppressive a bit too early. But it's a, again, it's becoming like even closer. And with the emulation activation cost increase, I think you don't need to nerf damage even more. It's so easy if it just becomes a bit too low that it becomes pretty, like, unusable. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that 5.5 is needed. I think we can live with the values there are now and then try to, like... There's other stuff you can do as... Wait to tomorrow, boys, but there's other stuff you can do that I think <laughs> may be more interesting. Poor yeah. Blizzard, dude. They say it now. They try to do the right thing and they looked up your document and they do what you want and now it's wrong as well. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean... I, yeah, this feels weird, right? But I got a lot more feedback since then. So I did like in original document, got a lot of feedback, but I, they haven't seen the updated after the feedback, which is uh, obviously a bit of an issue, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And by the way, the mana activation requirement thing is, yeah, it's wrong in the thumbnail yeah. there. It is 20 in game. Yeah. So it's like the correct values. Yeah. Nice. So they just forgot about that. That's fine. Uh, we also talked a lot about Fan of Knives because they wanted to buff it and they buffed it in a weird way so that it did a lot to a lot of targets. And I, it feels like they understand 
the values now. They increase the unit cap from 455 to 567. And uh, they specifically mention that it does 75 per target. So first of all, is this cor uh, implemented correctly now? What With what they want to do? Yeah, I mean, that last part makes no sense. Still do 75. That's only on level one, right? But I mean, I guess the, the logic follows with other damage values. I yeah. think these numbers should be correct. I haven't like completely done it, but it looks like intuitively correct. I think this uh, for what they want to do is fine. I think Phantom Knife changes will be very um, split down the middle, whether people like it or not. I think uh, some hum human orc or whatever undead players will think like any in buff to Phantom Knives is bad just per se. Some night elves don't like the fact that even they hit more targets, they still have the same damage output versus peasants, which was like some people have noticed uh, is a thing. So, I mean, I can do this one more time. They used to, peasants used to have less HP, so you did one Phantom Knights nice level three, and you one tap them with one hit after. Yeah. Now you probably need two hits, so people feel like it has a lot less impact on peasants. I, I, like I can, I can already say that I don't mind like a general small buff to a fan of life. Somehow we can discuss the values. I think maybe seven targets intuitively sounds a bit much, but maybe not. It's, uh, it's. I feel seven targets mostly buff it against the uh, gargs, maybe. Yes. But uh, yeah. I agree. Um, that level five will help the warden against gargs a lot, and I like that. I want to see the warden back in this matchup. It was really, really cool. Um, so yeah, let's take a look. Like, let's say warden does on average like forty-two damage-ish on level. Oh wait, is that level ten? Yeah, I don't want level ten. Uh, so let's say thirty-eight damage uh, on average with the warden plus five is. 43 damage roundabout. Um, so, Fan of Knives now looks like this. Uh, level 1, 75 damage. I think we can ignore that and focus on level 5 when it becomes really important. Um, so, this is the Warden attack. This is the Fan of Knife damage. You still need two attacks more. Most likely two attacks against peasants, depends on the damage roll and the items. Um, you will kill Acolytes on one hit, uh, but that I guess was the case as well before. Yeah, I think Echoes is more a thing that often in Rubian Tower plus the regen and movement speed of Acolytes makes it harder to even kill. Yeah, Are you, I mean, it used to be a mo lot more easy to farm peasants. I think that is, you've seen the 20 HP actually become an effect there. I, yeah. And I... I do agree with the Night of players that have pointed out that that probably wasn't what they were specifically thinking about when they did the Peasant change. It was more for like the early game survivability. So, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you, I think this is an interesting point to argue. Like, should Warden be a hero that is mostly just for laming Peasants as well? It might be, like, it depends a bit on how you want to, which direction you want to go with the hero as well. Okay, then. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Warden, fan of knives. Warden, fan of knives. Um, at least the numbers make sense now. So that's good. We will discuss about the rest more tomorrow. Uh, bears get mana. More mana. Okay. So this was... Okay, I can say this was my suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a lot of feedback on it. That that wasn't... I mean, I, my feedback I got was Night Elves didn't comment on it. And a lot of other players said not needed. So I kind of just slide silently removed it after. I can say the idea here, though, I think, which I don't think is like a necessarily bad idea behind it, uh, but I'm not sure it's needed. So it used to be that bear said 100 mana, then we got to 125 mana, which was the legendary double reju change. So you got two the regions from when you built the master bear and rid of the claw, and you can also go into bear form after. That was originally, again, an idea, I think, from Foggy. Because it used to be that human rifle pushes were very powerful. So you wanted to make that slightly less powerful by doing that. I think most people felt that after like I was adapted, it just became bears were like the W just felt super strong and unnecessarily strong. So but my idea of doing like an in-between is the following. I feel currently, I felt currently, but people I don't I would say most people I don't think agree with this. That Druids of the Claw felt a bit underwhelming in their micro potential like it used to be a time where you could double region do a lot of stuff around that and now you basically are stuck to like do one reju and bear form and you have, don't have mana for ages 
So the idea was maybe to like find a middle value here. I'm really not sure if that uh, that's like needed or requested that much. So maybe just unnecessarily making values a bit more uh, confusing. And I don't know if it changes much in practical play anyways. Yeah, I gotta say, I would rather see incentives to go something else than bears, especially for mirror matches. Um, because <laughs> I, we all know True. that bear mirror isn't really that great. And the best thing to do against bear mirror is to incentivize mass range, but they decentivize mass range with the talent cost increase and they give bears more mana. It's not necessarily where I see the mirror match. Um, and I feel like bears are also in a good spot, super powerful, uh, maybe a bit on the squishy side, but still lots of damage. Plus the utility that they bring uh, is probably unmatched for a unit in all of Warcraft. Not sure. I don't see that much harm, but I wouldn't mind if this gets deleted. Um, but what I really like is the next one, because I remember that from your patch note document as well. Fairy Dragon Mana Flare range reduced by 100. So this means that the AOE of how long Mana Flare can hit something. So you need to position a bit better with this. Uh, I can, I can, or I mean, Sevorka has asked me to not like talk too much about stuff we're going to talk about tomorrow. But uh, we're going to do a Mana Flare clinic tomorrow, Neo. We're going to like properly Ooh. do a Mana Flare clinic. <laughs> uh, so Mana Flare for some people probably that don't play human is like who cares about Mana Flare? Like, what does that even do? I've seen like a, a fairy do that once and nothing happened. Why do, why do I care? Uh, I can just say, like to before tomorrow, that they are in, there are situationally extremely strong against human. Uh, I would say by their values, they're completely broken, but uh, we can do that tomorrow in more detail. I think I don't. I'm not necessarily actually sure this is the. This was also a change I suggested. Maybe it's not the best change because it very like the smaller you make the AOE for effectiveness, it also makes it like positioning even more important and. Fighting is still like something human army does. Maybe it's not the perfect direction of it, but I think any any reduction in Man of Flare's power is a good thing, to be honest. Yeah, there are different screws that you could touch uh, to address this when it comes to damage or um, yeah, mana to damage conversion uh, or the range or whatever it is. I'm with you, also you, sometimes you feel it as an undead as well, uh, not as often as a human does, but yeah, I'm totally with you. That this is getting addressed and they see that, th that this is strong is good because last time we saw it, it was buffed into oblivion and it's good. Undeads, um, the fact that they leave race dead at 50 mana is worrying because we, yep. nobody wants it. We don't want mass necros, please. Don't, whatever you do with the Necros, don't touch Raise Dead. Don't. Yep. Don't. <laughs> don't do it, bro. <laughs> Abominations, though. We've been asking for this for a long time. Abomination collision size reduced from 48 to 40. So, Dondo, what does collision size mean? And where does it put the Abomination in comparison to the other heavy melee units? So collision size is basically how f how big the unit will actually be like in game. Not even necessarily how it looks, but how it actually collisions with other units. So the higher collision size, the less it's. I mean, it's going to take more space up in the three dimensional space, I guess. So it's going to block more. It's going to be harder to control, etc. This would make a bomb still larger than knights. So knights are thirty two. Uh, but there's now a bit smaller than Taurus. I think as a, the idea here is the A bombs are notoriously clunky. They're both slow to turn and they're very, um, very big and um, yeah. I mean they're beefy boys that block each other. You can the argument for having a different collision size from Taurus and A bombs. I can just do that if people are like uh, immediately noticing that now Taurus are the only very big unit except for mountain giants. Is that Taurus have also have an AOE attack? So if you make too if you made it too easy to like have a lot of torrents online uh, on a small or a slim line, it would make them insanely strong. I think 
So I, I, I don't, I mean, we can probably, this should be tested in how, what it actually makes. Does this actually make a difference? Maybe it has to be even small before it actually like is even noticeable. But I think anything to make albums a bit less clunky would make them used more. Um, and I think, I mean, it's, I feel like they're kind of used um, sometimes as humans just to get something out to do more like if you're ahead and you can just pump them. But usually they're pretty terrible units, I think most people would say. So I think this, uh, find some way to make them a bit more useful would be okay. I want to give a praise here. Um, I don't, I, it was probably a community uh, proposal to do this, but when Blizzard changed the balance in the past four to five years or so, it was cost, damage, v any values like HP, mana, etc. Collision size and turn rate has never been touched for any unit in forever. So that they are not shying away anymore for for, from, from touching these values and giving another um, dimension with how we can balance units is really cool and opens up a lot of possibility for the future, uh, maybe, as not only do we have collision size touch, but also turn rate. What the hell is turn rate, Dondo? How fast the unit rotates on its axis, Neo. So why does that need balancing? What is good? What is bad? Uh, quicker turn rate means that it turns around faster. So that makes it more maneuverable. Um, I think this will make it as maneuverable as a bear, basically, and knights. I think most tier 3 units or the big units are 0 0.5 for some reason. Um, abonations are even slower or to turn around. So it just makes them more maneuverable, easier to actually hit their targets properly, easier to retreat to a certain degree, stuff like that. At turn rate, then values here, 0 0.1, matters probably a lot less than people think. It's often quite hard, actually, to see this 0 0.1, like, increase or decrease. And map makers made me aware of this, that I felt like, oh, 0 0.1 seems, sounds like a good thing, but you, it's not very noticeable, probably, but it's still, I mean, it's a small buff, I guess, for a very clunky unit. Yeah, and same goes for Crypt Fiend, um, which should, in theory, especially help uh, kiting against mass air, for example, or kiting in general. Yeah, uh, I guess like the idea was to incentivize some of the more Crypt Fiend usage. That is usually translated, it usually, I mean, you do use them more, but it has been, Google Play has been more dominating. I think this will also probably be a pretty divisive change. Um, I think a lot of people feel fiends are perfectly fine as this. It's more maybe that ghouls are a bit too strong, so like to get neglected. Uh, but I mean, yeah, um, fiends also. I mean, maybe the thing I'm find hard with fiends is that even the even if the turn rate doesn't look that bad, their turn AI can sometimes be completely broken. Like if you there's a legendary for people that then every you hang out in gym Discord. There's a legendary Kaiser clip. Where it tries to get a crypt fin to turn around and it takes like 14 minutes. Um, <laughs> so Even I don't know that. Oh, it, oh, it's legendary. He's, uh, he's slightly upset. So they can be very um, clunky. And I think it was ma it was masked a bit, crypt fins, how they maneuvered they were, because the um, aura used to be stronger, right? So they yeah. were faster. And now they maybe appear a bit more clunky than they used to be. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get my hands on that. I want to I wanna feel the new fiend turn rate and the new a bomb uh, this should be good and it yeah it incentivizes anyone something. that has any editor knowledge could just make like a map where you keep everything as is but just increase turn rates on units right so you can yeah. compare pretty easily it should be pretty doable yeah i still miss a uh, nerf to frenzy um there's there's stuff for missing neo Wait, there is. wait, there... wait till tomorrow, Neo. Okay, gonna be... okay. I just want to say because if I don't mention this and say, yeah, under new tools, gimme, gimme, I got I the entire do, uh, Reddit on my ass again. I think you can do a quick summary of stuff. I still like we still find uh, pretty obvious, and we can do like what we actually think that should be, like on how it should be fixed. Uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow. I'm I'm trying to yeah. do hype casting for tomorrow. Neo. Very uh, good, very good. Tomorrow, the big balance talk. Uh, let's move to the orcs. They uh, listened and probably saw the FFA yesterday where Bladestorm decimated. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, where Bladestorm decimated. Yeah, yeah, so they killed seven necr necromancers uh, that got a heal scroll after getting low health and still died after. Yeah, it was yep. pretty bonkers. 
and heal spray as well. It was yeah, crazy. Uh, so blade storm um, now not at 160 damage per second, but rather 140, since it is a seven second spell that is seven times 140, and that is 980, which is pretty good, I would say. Um, does it, let's say, kill a barracks now? I don't think so, right? No, not at all. Not even close. Uh, so I think the values are okay. Does it kill a haunted gold mine? It still does. Does it kill three of life? I think. No, it doesn't. Right. I think that's the most most important one in my head. Well, no, it doesn't. So yeah, I think buildings are a lot safer from this ultimate now because that's really what we want to prevent. Like I don't want to see a blade master just crushing every single building. Uh, coming out of nowhere with a blade storm that's rather lame but i like that it has more I impact in the fights and this might be the sweet spot might still be on the strong side in general is fine to me at least and i think uh all the orc players out there they, they, they might be celebrating until the end of the week headhunters get their hps yeah i mean this is a huge request to change. I think this is extremely important, actually, uh, currently. Um, Headhunters has like more or less completely, and they haven't completely vanished, but they completely vanished more than you add a few at the start. And they do feel can feel very underwhelming against human pressure in general, both if you're trying to pressure Expo, but also if you get pushed into your base at level 3 AM. Um, in general, um, well, I could do like be a little, little bit of like thing on this is that. I think human orc now is very dependent on orc doing like the perfect read without having information in a way. So if they try to counter the fast expo and the human goes for creeping as Fortitude, for instance, did against Starbuck, it can go wrong very fast and vice versa if you like do the wrong response. And since headhunters are so weak, you kind of have no counter punch to like discovering you maybe did like the wrong read. It's not a read actually, you kind of did the wrong guess. So I think this is a good change overall. It increases orc power a bit against specifically against human early game, which I think is perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. This in total buffs orc as a whole, which I think was necessary, uh, but not in a one dimensional way. If you look at it all together, um, it's of course a big buff to the Raider Walker build as the walkers are buffed it's also uh buffed to everything that involves headhunters which is oftentimes the opposite way of constructing your army uh so it feels like they don't want to shoehorn you into one specific orc playstyle, but overall nice buffs all around maybe a bit on the extreme side on the walker thing but uh yeah right direction thanks for listening finally we uh never wanted this nerf on headhunters in the first place and we were right. And now you'll finally listen. That's a good thing. Yep. Fire freaking Lord. Everyone who was on the call last week mentioned do something with the Fire Lord. And now they do something to the Fire Lord. Incinerate mana cost reduced from 6 to 2. To people who are not familiar with the Fire Lord because you never see him. Incinerate is basically an orb effect um, that increases the damage the more you hit or the more often you hit a target. It was very, very mana hungry as every attack cost uh, 6 mana. Now, not as much. Yeah, I think this is a good change. I mean, why not? Uh, like intuitively, I can't like find anything bad with it. Um I actually don't like the second change, though. I can explain that, I guess. Yeah, when, uh, just real, real quick. Um, Incinerate was a passive one, so it didn't cost yeah. mana. And that was broken! Um, so keep the mana in general. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but lowering it and also lowering it significantly is nice. Uh, but you have concerns about the lava split, Don. Don't tell me why. I mean... Fire Lord was kind of already mostly pressured into some form of a niche with like we we do Fire Lord second to just do a tower push or like do like a super committal if I don't win now it's super over game because the Fire Lord doesn't scale that well as a second hero in general. 
this kind of just even further pushes that and it makes that push even stronger. And I kind of don't like that meta or like that way of uh, making Farlorn interesting. So now it needs less hits to uh, get the lava split. It makes like that tower push. If you don't focus the lavas immediately, it makes them stronger. I don't, I think of all the abilities Firelord had. Far, of course, lava splits scale very badly when you get a lot of dispel, but they're very strong before dispel. That would be like my way of thinking about it. So I'm not sure, like, I think it's, a, it's just like most summons, right? It's usually not that strong into late game when Dispel is online. So maybe we don't need to buff them even more in the early parts of the game. And maybe find the, rather buff the other abilities so he still has some functionality after Lava spawns, spawns become weaker. So I don't like this change particularly. And it's a pretty big change. 12 yeah. to 9 is a lot of, yeah, you're going to get a lot more Lava spawns very quickly than it used to. Yeah, it's a uh, win more dynamic that we have with lava spawns. If it works, it's really strong. If it doesn't work, you lost. So th these lava spawns are really expensive in mana with the limited mana pool that a Fire Lord has. So maybe that's a better way to address them instead of the split requirements. Um, or if you do the split requirements and we see more lava spawns, make the lava spawns weaker. That yeah, you gotta is... do one or both, one or either, right? Yeah. So you get then you would at least have like some counter plays so you can try to focus the lava spawns a bit. And uh, now they're just as strong, they just multiply faster and get even more punished for not even being able to kill them fast enough. So yeah. yeah. And we have evidence that this is dangerous because this is rather similar to what they did with the Crypt Lord when they just basically doubled the amount of beetles that the Crypt yeah. Lord got at one point, which was completely broken and totally overwhelming. So Blizzard learned from the past, um, giving a hero a lot more summons out of nowhere is dangerous. Think about it again, please. Volcano? does more damage now. Um, I'm not too sure if this is broken. Uh, we've seen... <laughs> actually, we've seen Volcano in a super fun game of Razor Moon versus Cars in the America's Rara Land qualifier, where it stunned an entire screen of Cars' units. Um, was the damage of the Volcano ever an issue, or was it rather a stun dynamic per se? I mean, it has like that thing. If you if you are lucky with your pre splits, it does nothing. So and you can always TP out to get away from it. Uh, I'm not sure this. Uh, like the I'm not actually sure how much this change does in general. I think yeah, I haven't studied volcano enough to be to be a good judgment here. What we is should even test it, I guess. Ah, yeah, that's true. What, what I do for I, I mean, <laughs> so it doesn't not... change the inherent fact that Fire Lord is very bad until Volcano, usually, I think. Yeah, like, yeah. if you disregard the other changes. So, um, yeah, there are some people I know that mention, like, yeah, when you say, like, level 8 hero, if that's just too strong, who cares if they get level 8 hero, they deserve to win. But, um, I mean, it's, it's a bit scary, these kind of changes for other game modes, probably more than solo. Yeah. So maybe if like it's super broken, it will be a curse on FFA and 4v4, probably. Correcto. Um, this is now a max damage of 2,250 instead of 1,500. Quite significant, I would say. 2,200 yeah. damage. Um, I can speak, if I'm allowed to, for the FFA community. Um, this will raise bases. Fact. Yeah. Like... Absolute fact, this will wipe out bases in no time. Um, yeah, maybe a bit, maybe indeed a bit problematic. This, maybe they're a bit overzealous with the generally the ultimate buffs in that they go from like uh, it's just it feels like it's just because it's a perfectly round number, so they go from 100 to 150. I mean, yeah, like I think most people be like intuitively start with 110. <laughs> Yeah, and then I guess. like it scale like every <laughs> time to see when it stops being like too or when it starts being too strong. Uh, so my my idea is that without testing it, that they like my first intuition is that they need to scale back anyway. So maybe it makes them easier for themselves to not. But the thing is, of course, as the blade storm, you can now test it, and if it's broken, it's very easy to prove and then just reduce it. So I, yeah. that's like maybe understandable in these ultimates. It's worse, I think, to do two big buffs on more smaller stuff that is hard to look like immediately check because then it's also harder to get them to revert stuff yeah would be my idea 
I think this is not necessarily addressing the problematic parts of the Fire Lord, but uh, that they finally touch him um, is very, very nice. And especially the incinerate one is really good. Um, let's move to items then. That is something. The circlet stays on level two. I want to mention this again. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely hate it. Don't do it. Circlet was okay on level three in this iteration. If it's still the 222 circlet, it cannot be on level two. It's too strong. By far the strongest. Ruins the drop table for level two. Don't put it back if you don't change the item in general. But I said this last week already. Um, but we got our wish when it comes to the telly staff, Dondo. Yeah, I feel like this is good. Um, some, I think, especially in certain matchups, I think all these two in shops have like they obviously have a trade off here. It might remove tactical play and fighting over shop, which is something some people inherently like, and I don't necessarily disagree. However, for instance, in Night of Mirror, somebody pointed out staff of teleportation can be like super game deciding from the get-go. So, I would also say human versus night elf. Uh, not yeah, human, human not not human versus night elf, uh night elf versus orc. Yeah. And even like under night elf sometimes can feel super decisive because it removes yeah. like so much mobility for the night elf if the DK steals it then. So yeah, I think I think maybe this is fine. Um you can still like introduce more tactical play on maps where it is the one shop. You can still control the shop to a certain degree, right? Yeah. To just give able to uh give able to buy. So yeah, I think this I think it's fine. I think it's uh I think the benefit you get from the more like tactical play of buying staff and removing staff from the other player is less than the disadvantage the game for game health overall that you felt like, oh I did everything perfect. I just didn't buy staff five seconds earlier and now the game is over. Yeah. Which I think it actually happens quite often. I think so too. Um, especially when two players are standing at the shop and spam the button and yeah. just one player can get it. That's just luck or connection. And a game shouldn't be decided by that. I wanted this for literal years. I think I wanted this since they introduced the same mechanic to 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 boots of, boots of speed where it was the similar thing like one gets the boots he's faster now he can chase he wins the game because of that it was always bad and i really like that they did this uh praise and shout out to that now <laughs> the next one is <laughs> crystal what will walk do now i think it just ruins <laughs> hawk's gameplay overall. i mean he's based his entire place out on getting crystal ball at expos like, this is, uh, crystal ball on breaking. level two very very early um that i mean as an item that's... power i don't i don't like feel that's bad but like, they haven't probably haven't done what they always need to do and do stuff like this right they need to change gold values etc yeah 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 definitely like okay let's uh the crystal ball has pro like every item has a cell value and just because you change the level of an item that doesn't adjust the cell value we see this for a period of vitality for example that sells higher than everything else on that drop table and the crystal ball as well sells for more gold than a gloves of haze than a ring of protection than a claw and this has to be adjusted and i i didn't look it up but i'm 100 certain they didn't change the cell value no but um, like my first, I actually haven't thought about this change, like beforehand. So I have no idea like how much I actually think about it. But intuitively, I don't necessarily think this like is horrible. But if they yeah. change the cell cost, I didn't think about it either. But I do have an initial positive feeling about it because scouting early is very important, and you have to sacrifice yeah. something for it, and that is like a worker or. Uh, that 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 could bring you lumber or you sacrifice a skeleton with uh with, which could increase your creep speed so instead of using that you can now use the crystal ball on a certain cooldown and that helps you especially in the early game and then later on you sell it because uh, you know how the game is going to look like and what's going on um yeah i, I guess think I that's like actually it. a valid point yeah it might but that's, uh, the point otherwise might be that it kind of um devalue scouting active scouting in the early game you can just like bail yourself out by crystal ball 
But then you have to have a game plan uh, oriented around getting a crystal ball, which is, of course... Uh, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, I, I, I mean, if you're going to key crystal ball, I think it, like it's good to key, get it below on level 2 because it's not a good item on level 3, usually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, Is yeah. this in any sort of form dangerous? No. No, I think the main intuition is that uh, maybe just like the value scouting to maybe a bit too much of a degree. So let's say human now doesn't send a footman to scout, and if they get a crystal ball, they kind of jail out, uh, get like very cheaply out of not scouting. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they can also click the crystal ball just the, the wrong place, and it doesn't matter. Or like in. Depending on Crystal Ball is very scary, right? Because you can like scout the expo. He's not going expo, but you can do like super greedy creep camps or something that doesn't give you like so. Yeah, I mean it still helps you, right? Because then you know yeah. that it's not an expand. Like uh, knowing that nothing is happening on one spot tells you that something is happening at another spot, so it still adds to your knowledge about the game. It does, but it can also give you like false um, uh, false confidence. So. True. You know this is happening, so you kind of just assume this other thing is happening. Well, the footman running around can actually confirm actually yeah. what's happening. So, yeah. yeah. I think we all agree that Crystal Ball wasn't meant to be at level 3. The other items are just way, way, way better. And that it's not in that table anymore as the loser item um, is a good thing. Uh, it won't help you creeping yourself, but might lead to creep jack or some knowledge. I think this is good. If you don't want to... Mm -hmm. Uh, touch the value of the crystal ball, add, add anything to it, or delete it entirely. This is cool. This also adds to the uh, very, very limited drop table of level two drops. That's yeah. also good. I, I, I am, I'm, I'm posy on this. Yeah, I mean, intuitively, I don't see like this is a huge problem. I feel like if changes are not very, if changes are even okay changes, that I don't think changes much. Like, why be negative? Like, yeah. any change any change yeah. that is not bad is, like, probably a good change in some way. It gives, like, some shake-up of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so, too. Um, they also... Something I really like, and it's similar uh, to what I said about turn rate and uh, the size of a unit, they never really touch the mercenaries. And I know that our friends of the map making community have been asking about changes to these mercenaries for years now. P I think since pre reforged they did. Um, and now they do. So maybe there's hope for the map makers that other creeps and mercenaries can be adjusted as well to give them the proper values. The ice mercenaries now um, as fast as the other trolls. Yeah, Just and I guess the main idea here is, well, is that they now can be um, re-aggroed in a different way than they used to, right? So then, because of their move speed, they were really hard to re-aggro properly. Or like change aggro and aggro was uh, the way I thought about it. This is Save Orcas. Uh, I have to say that this is Save Orcas idea. I can just give it out of the bat. So if you hit this, it's Save Orcas patch. Blame him. <laughs> Uh, blame but, uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I mean. I think. I mean. Stuff like this is a good change, and also uh, the assassins as a merc uh, by boy by was extremely good, right? So I think this is actually an okay nerf for yeah. just that purpose at all. All right. Um. Then let's see what happened here on this PTR update. Little little summary from my side. Militia duration second buff. I'm torn. Um, bash change, not good. Devotion change into the right direction, but still not good. Keep food, great. Castle food, maybe not necessary. Uh, but yeah, keep food, really good. Immolation cost, okay. Maybe a little too low, but in general, good. Mana flare, nice. Fan of knives, nice. Druids, okay. A bomb, nice, nice. Crypt fiend, nice. Blade storm, nice. Headhunter, super nice. Incinerate, super nice. Lava splits, dangerous. Volcano, dangerous. Telly staff, absolutely amazing. Crystal ball, good. That is, in my book, a win for PTR two. Yep. 
I mean, I think this is a lot better. Uh, there's still some, it still has like a few things that might be uh, Baroque and Nero if there is introduced. I think the volcano thing is just one thing, and also the lava split thing worries me a bit. But uh, I mean, we can test and check and see how it works. This feels at least less, uh, I mean, just removing the rusty pick item in itself is just a huge win. So yeah. we have like stuff that has, we can relax a bit. Yes. It feels like something we can work from. Um, yeah. Also, the I plus, feel like this, this is dimension. more deserving of good, proper feedback from people. I think it was good that the first reaction was a bit panicky to mm -hmm. kind of just put the focus on maybe this isn't thought through properly and this is a bit more. And the bash changes are also insane, by the way. They need to think a bit yeah. about that as well. So, yeah. Okay. That is a step into the right direction. Uh, we will display another stream tomorrow with basically, I guess we're going to call it. Uh, this is what you need to do, Blizzard. Um, <laughs> And they well, can this, is a, this is, a, this is a, not. I wouldn't let not call this a full community suggestion, but call it a suggestion that has been like been uh, gotten some proper feedback and yeah, some stuff they haven't looked at. I think that is pretty obvious. They need to look at from at least mm, me, Sevorkas, the guys who got feedback from this perspective. Yeah, yeah. that includes. Map makers, people who watch a lot, people who play a lot, people I on the... I wonder if Sevorkas wants us to name drop a couple of them players, maybe. Let's, <laughs> Let's see. see. Do we want uh, I think we we don't reveal too much when it says that uh, people from the highest MMR ranges were involved in this uh, self-elected council, um, if you want to call it like that. Yes. That just, um, you know, nobody is in cahoots with Blizzard or in touch with with Blizzard, there's just some people who are more interested uh, in working on balance in a constructive way than others, and they gave great feedback, and there was just continuous talk about this. Um, was a lot of spitballing, was a lot of back and forth interaction. Uh, and I mean, we've gotten the feedback from a great random player, a historically super great orc player. <laughs> to say two of the players especially and night elves we got a lot of feedback from actually so yeah i mean we got a lot of from different people i think it's pretty well rounded but we'll see yeah we will see tomorrow indeed i uh i kind of want to open the telephone lines again that was a lot of fun last time are you with me or do you want to go uh i'll i'll be with you for a while and then maybe i have to because me and the workers actually have to finish up the <laughs> since they've now got a new ptr change but uh i'll jo join you for a while i'll talk to the workers when he wants to talk sure okay so we go into the peon borough uh on the walker and uh, the on the back to walker of discord there we go uh, back to warcraft discord there is a waiting room you can join us and tell us what you think about ptr2 and while we wait for you to join we got a super chat by tt who gave us five euros thank you thank you thank you also abstract thank you for the three-year resub toby groby for the three month Fuha with a tier one sub for 32 months we have Here's a star we have a star shape. oh we have a star shape oh okay legend attention away from people who serve my bills or who, who pay my bills and all <laughs> it, and all attention to star shape what's up dude Yo, yo, can you hear me? We can yo. hear you. <clears throat> Wait, you let me switch. Uh, let me switch microphone. I think I'm using a bad one. Sounds better than uh, some of my co-casters, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you feel like. It's good to hear you. Uh, of course, also very good random player. One of the best European players uh, at the DreamHack circuit. Almost got a map of, of X-Lord with a million towers. I will never forget that. <laughs> So yeah, right. uh, whenever you're ready, stage is yours. Wait, what are we talking about? About the patch. Ah, uh, okay. In general, you are you are setting the stage basically. You decide the topic. All right, let me just. Uh, is there a link to the? There we go. I see you coming. I mean, so it's, very well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they did a very quick uh, update, and. <laughs> Like my impression, whenever they do a very quick update, is that like there's a PTR, but I don't really think they've 
like data mine the PTR to make changes. Like they've only listened to feedback and then made changes. That's what it seems like to me. Uh, and so whenever there's a PTR, I feel like that's often the case that that like how how much useful data do they actually get from a PTR and how much are they just kind of winging it based on their own intuition and what people say. You know what I mean? Yep. So it seems uh, like I don't know. I feel like they oftentimes they could just as well just release a patch and then like let people play it right away and then make changes as they go along. Uh, the, the original patch was crazy the, with the the uh, Howard and Aura and, and the Bash and all that. Uh, but I think they made some nice changes uh, along the way now, and I'm quite excited, especially for the Fire Lord change. Uh, so we can start there, I guess. Yeah, you've always been a player that was a little outside the box. So what can well, you I do mean, with the Fire Lord now? So, uh, Dondo, can I call you Dondo? Call me whatever you want, Starship. Uh, mentioned, like, so the Lava Split, I kind of agree, is stupid, because it just, all the strategies that uh, were very all-in uh, just kind of got better. And, I, I, like, we don't really want to see Fire Lord Tower Rush, I don't think. Uh, so, in that sense, it's bad. But as a first hero playing a non all in, like I'm thinking hot style, you know, uh, Tree yeah. of Life, the, the very first thing you build is a Tree of Life, and then you get the Fire Lord and Archers. That style, I think, will be much, much, much stronger now because, especially the instant rate buff. Like, imagine how much more efficient the Moonwells are going to be when you're just spending two mana for every instant rate instead of six. Yeah. And, like, that was always the big issue with that style is like you kind of run out of Moon Juice and then you're dead. So I think this can actually like this could be a, have a serious impact uh, on how how Night Elf is played uh, if people ever like adopt that style. Are you excited for that playstyle, or are you worried that it's too strong now? I'm excited. I think it's uh, it was like right on the on the cusp of being playable, but it was always kind of a gimmick. Like if you knew about it, it was usually kind of hard countered. Uh, but I'm, I think it's like it's such a radically different style. So I, like, if it could be more viable, I think that's great. And, and I mean, we already see like it's Night Elf has kind of gone back to the old ways of like Demon Hunter Bears every single game, every matchup. So it's like I think this would be really fun to see. Yeah, they try to incentivize Warden. They will incentivize Fire Lord, even though I don't know if they know who Hot was. Uh, but uh, yeah, going to yeah, be fun. I mean, that's also another thing is like. I've talked about this before, I think, but like, why Fire Lord out of nowhere? Like, it's because people mentioned it last time, or like, yeah. wh why does Fire Lord deserve to get buffed, but not Potom or not, you know, Tinker or whatever? Like, why do they all of a sudden just buff this one hero? There's no reasoning behind it. Well, I guess uh, on Thursday, when we had the open mic night, once, uh, like we had now, everybody mentioned the Fire Lord. So I guess they were listening in. So if you have any uh, proposals to them, they the ears might be open right now. Buff bottom, buff hunts. <laughs> <laughs> the two things, maybe. Uh, okay, how would you? Okay, let's 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 go serious with the how would you? If you, you say, if you say here heavy armor again, sir, chef, I'm I'm gonna I kick you out. Upset. But but <laughs> I mean, we all want a more exciting bottom, I guess. So how do, would you want to buff the bottom? Well, okay. Well, I, I might be the wrong guy to ask because I think the bottom is fine as is. I, it, like, I would just buff the numbers, honestly, because it's like Owl is a lot of fun to use, and the bottom aura is just an aura. It's like you know, some people like Remo, you know, they really want to change the hero, but I think you could li literally just buff the aura and and the searing arrows, and that'd be that'd be enough. Uh, like, if 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 uh, the true shot aura ever gets buffed significantly, then I think. You, we, we would probably start seeing uh, Potom outside of Night Elf Mirror as a first hero. Mm -hmm. Because Scout Owl is already one of the best spells in the game. It's just like people don't realize it because nobody plays Potom because it's a terrible hero. But like one of the best spells in the game is on that hero, and that's Scout Owl. It's like completely busted. Are you Can talking one-on-one? -on -one one with or a question? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. sure, sure, sure. If you buff Trushadora, though, wouldn't it mean that Night of Mirror will never be anything other than Potom Hunts or stuff like that? Because if it becomes too strong, right, just any other way of playing Night of Mirror won't work, I think. That's no, like I mean, a risk, intuitively. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But I mean, right now, it's only Bear, Demon, Demon Hunter Bear. So it's like, 
is that mm-hmm. better or worse than than Potom hunts? And like Potom hunts, especially today, like people just get better and better and better at the game. So like this style of Potom hunts isn't like it's been kind of solved a bit. So I think if you just buff it, I think it'll still be fine to to play uh, Demon Hunter bears and stuff like that. Especially now with the rejuve or the mana uh, buff, ten extra mana like helps a little bit as well, uh, defending those pushes. All right. Are you worried about the Demon Hunter emulation with the changes now, as they kind of doubled down on it? Uh, I think it's fine. Demon Hunter is completely busted, so it's like... <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think uh, nerfing him is more than fine, and it's like one of those... It's just the most frustrating hero, isn't it? Like, it's... I think it's fine to, to just nerf it a bit. I, I'd honestly just remove it from the game if I could, but that's a bit of an extreme opinion. <laughs> Do you like have it's any... Never... Yeah, it's yeah, not... go ahead. No, 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 you, you go ahead. You're the expert here. I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, it's 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 never fun to play against Demon Hunter. Mana Burn, like, the whole concept of the hero is just not fun. It's kind of like the tank. Like, we don't need tanks in the game, and we don't really need... We don't need a hero that makes you not be able to play the game. And then also give that hero emulation. It's like, I don't know. Uh, like, not well, a fan of the hero. The whole concept of Demon Hunter is having emo names and dragging everyone <laughs> down with them. I feel like that suits him. <laughs> it's a good yeah. thing. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else that you would like to see that is not in the notes or anything else that you're worried about? Uh, I'm, I'm a bit like when I read the new changes with, with the, the collision size and the, the turn rate and stuff, abominations. I wrote it in the chat as well, but I feel like it's a bit. It kind of goes away from the, the feeling of the unit, or like, uh, like it's a huge stitched together monster type unit. Like it's not supposed to be small and responsive. It's supposed to be there uh, to spread disease cloud, and you know, one abomination will spread disease cloud just as good as any number. So it's like I don't think this unit was ever intended to be massable. So why should we make it massable? I think it's fine to be like a clum- clumsy, tanky disease spreading unit. So it feels kind of a. Uh, off flavor to to make it uh, this way, uh, I feel. Yeah, no, no, that's a fair counter argument. I would say, I would, my, I think, yeah, we still need to keep in mind though that Ford is still big. I mean, it's still bigger than knights. It's the only thing that are like that is bigger now is torrents. Yeah, so, that's fair. I mean, and and this is, I think, uh, Neo mentioned this as well. Like that, just changing turn rates and collision size is a very novel approach. I think it's very clever to try. Um, so why not? And it's a very small tweak, which is again like the weird thing about Blizzard now is like one of the patch notes is that Bash does 100 damage, and the other is like, oh, we changed the turn rate by 0.1. <laughs> like it, the extremes are just. And and if you have all these changes at once, and some are really big and some are really small, how do you even evaluate like what a specific change has done to the game? It's very very difficult, I would say. Yeah, I agree. So I, and like speaking of that Bash, like I. Critical Strike, I think, is also kind of a feels-bad uh, spell in the game, and now Bash is just going to become that as well. It's like you either take plus zero damage or plus 100 damage from any random attack from a level 3 Bash. It's like, do we need? Do we want that variance? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is all very fair points. All right, Starship, thank you very much. If you, hey, have, any, if you have anything else to say, let us know. But otherwise, uh... we're going to open the line. I think the only thing I'm missing from uh, the orc buffs is that they could probably do with a uh, watchtower buff as well, maybe plus 100 range. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's nice. it. Uh, bye bye, <laughs> Sasha. Have a good one. Right. <laughs> see you guys. See you guys. Do we have to, uh, do we have to he mention? He was fortified to do counter chaos damage. <laughs> yeah. Um, should we mention that the last one was a joke, just in case someone is listening? And he's memeing because he loves to play them and loved to play them and annoys everyone with them. That was a joke. Don't do it. It was a joke, but Starship would generally like that change as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> 100%. Two things can be same at the same uh, be true at the same time. And I guess this, uh, this will be one of the cases. Here we go. Uh, phone lines are open once again. We are on the Back to Warcraft Discord. There's a channel called uh, Peon Borrow. Join us if you have anything to say. If uh, I see uh, people, <laughs> certain people, uh, making us responsible. 
Yeah, but tomorrow I'm gonna make someone else responsible. So then we just we do like the circle of um, blame shaming. I think that's fine. It's a good thing. Yeah, in the end, in the public eye, it's all Remo's fault anyway. That is true. Even though his uh, response to the patch just came online today, and we have someone who I think is gonna be extremely happy today. Scars, what's up, dude? Yo, yo, yo what's up? <laughs> How uh, many beers are you in? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. I have, no. I, I have to st uh, to stay in a clear mind uh, until my Pion Boroyo experience is finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, so in general, um, in general, I'm yeah surprised uh, twice. First, that they actually watched the the PTR content of the community, and secondly, the changes they made. Um, yeah, so of course, especially the troll headhunter buff was really needed, and finally they realized it. Mm, I'm still on a on a no no justice for devotion aura uh, <laughs> position where where I said clearly last time there can't be a middle ground so just let the aura stay the same I actually got convinced by you guys maybe that uh, the the militia duration would be fine to to make it uh, stronger but uh, just like in the last iteration so plus 2.5 seconds I like the argument that it's good for alternating first heroes, which I would uh, like. Um, yeah, and I'm still really um, confused about the bash <laughs> uh, because I really think that the, the stun duration increase also on units is extremely powerful. It's like mm. a tangle was, right? Yeah, and also, I mean, it's a passive, and <laughs> you it costs no mana first, and secondly, I'm not 100% sure how it works. I'm not the pro at the game mechanics. And oh, I can explain you, Mr. Scars. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask my question, then I'm really happy. <laughs> so first, um, so during a bash stun duration, you can bash another time, right? Does it like give the full next six seconds at level three or does it like overlap at some point do you know it no i mean so you can double bash yeah and it will twist this was three seconds and it was one second into the first one you get like one more second right so it um it overlaps in a way it doesn't give you the full duration after but i mean it still gives you the opportunity that you can ah, get like bash yeah, yeah. for six seven seconds if you're unlucky. Yeah, so if you yeah yeah so if you bash someone for at level three for five seconds and you bash him another time you'll get another six seconds so total 11 seconds done right <laughs> that's i think how it works so yeah, and, and I would it's say, nice. I mean, it's not too, uh, like, if you have it at level two already with four seconds, it's amazingly strong, in my opinion, also against units. Like, you, if, if you bash a unit once and you keep attacking him, it's basically dead. Yeah. <laughs> and especially because we have, like, big units like bears or uh, yeah, uh, knights, abomination and so on, might be really strong against those units. And also, it's not too unlikely to get at least like level four quite quickly when you play M MK first. Um, I I think it's too strong. M maybe it's too strong in general, but at least I would say make it at least two, three, four seconds and not two, five, six. Um, yeah, and that's it for the bash stun. That's my 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 main concern: the stun duration. On heroes and on and on units, like I think on units, it's quite crucial as well. Since they didn't listen last time, uh, maybe there is a chance that you explain once again, real quick, why the devotion aura change is still bad and they shouldn't touch it. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite the opinion of you guys or Dondor uh, said it, I think. So, just because Paladin gets seen the most was undead where the Divine Shield has a, sp a special use case because, first of all, it's more about survivability because you are in extreme... Uh, survivability of heroes because you are in extreme late game. You have you have uh, upgraded knights and so on. So the armor is not the most important thing, but just to keep everything alive. 
because with a brilliance high high level brilliance aura and holy light you can save your units you don't need the armor that much but in general the devotion aura is is just really strong and i i think you shouldn't um yeah buff it just because you don't see it in the most use case of paladin doesn't mean it's it's a bad spell uh, it's it's the other way around it's really strong so in other matchups in late game where you see paladin you will you will see devotion hour or with pala first builds against unnet or with i mean which is not too likely to be honest but also, yeah, some cheese strats or some yeah off meta pala rifle. It's really really strong. So yeah, I ju I just don't see uh, a reason for a buff. All right, then I want to ask you about the fire lord because it's not that rare that orcs go for like uh, Farsia fire lord tower pushes or stuff like that. Um, yeah. Actually, I like the changes, <laughs> uh, but um, not because I think it's really strong and I can finally just uh, fire Lord Rush every game. <laughs> but overall, I, I still feel like, because especially in, in, in Orc Mirror, it's quite settled to Blade Master, Shadow Hunter, Raider Walker. And I think that even if you buff the Headhunters in this matchup, it's kind of still set for Blade Master uh, uh, grunts, and actually, uh, it was really a surprise that they, in my opinion, might have found a way to make Fasia Fire Lord um, at least valuable for like um, an off-meta cheese strat. So not, so at least you have it once or twice in a in a long series by either uh, one or both players. So I think it would be actually kind of healthy for the game. Um, especially because if both players decide to play Farseer Fire Lord Rush like as a cheese and they realize they are playing Farseer against Farseer, you might have like another um, option for the mirror. So they might go uh, SH or TC second because Fire Lord only sucks against Farseer. So you have more variation. Um, yeah, so it's kind of kind of okay, I think. Maybe you can um, reduce the split. Not from 12 to 9, but like from 12 to 10 or something. Or 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 you do it like, I think Neos, you said it, uh, just reduce the mana. So you everything stays the same, but they cost like 20 or 30 less mana. So you can use them not only twice, but maybe three times in like one attack. Yeah, that would certainly be helpful and probably the right uh, way to do it or a better way to do it. Um, would you be excited to get a crystal ball from your first camp? Yeah, it feels really weird. Like, if you find it once, <laughs> it might be good, but... True. Didn't think like, about this yet. Yeah, good point. If you find it multiple times, it <laughs> will suck big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, like, it's... It's an, I I kind of understand what they try to do, but first, the crystal ball isn't give uh, is not giving you that much information right at the beginning of the game because most races will scout anyways or orc will harass anyways. So the use case is is like less strong than if you find it just right before tier two or at tier two and you can scout does the enemy have an expo or which tier two buildings does he have so i think the use case is, is like just invalid like for the real early game so you, you rather would have armor attack speed or damage um yeah so it, it, it feels weird like if you find it later on on a green camp it's nice but if you f if you find it right in the beginning, it sucks. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's a weird it's a weird spot, and especially with maps where you have like many level two creeps, uh, like the the item level they drop, you can also find like multiple crystal balls, and that that feels weird as well. Yeah, you yeah. could have a situation where one guy gets uh, three circlets and has plus six on everything, and you got three yeah. crystal balls. Like yeah, Hawk so will definitely quit with this patch. 
but I I have an uh, idea how to change it and um, I mean there was always the idea to give it its stats so make it like I don't know crystal ball active and like plus one int or something mm -hmm. that might be something or what um, to uh, in terms of the where do, where does it drop um, it it ca it could be dropped in the in a sentry ward illusion and um, the potion camp so maybe that's more fitting. Because actually, if you get a sentry ward or a crystal ball or illusion on a crystal ball, it might be still it might be still worse, but not too too bad. I think mm -hmm. it's more fitting in this category of items, in my opinion. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I mean, there is the purpose of scouting with the watch award and illusion. So thematically, uh, yeah. it would be nice there, I guess. And actually, I can get a, a better idea but the idea was from remo actually the actually first time i i, I will copy an idea from remo but <laughs> i will change it a little bit to just show him yeah your idea was okay but in the end you didn't th think it through so <laughs> uh, so remo had the idea of far side having like a dust um a dust um, effect on the units if you uh, if you cast it on them and maybe it could be similar with the crystal ball so for example if you reveal archers or blade master they have like a dust effect um, and and uh, in not like is it now that they are just revealed for a few seconds and then they can hide again no make a dust effect 20 30 seconds so it's a scouting and revealing item because sentry wards is like full reveal but can be destroyed so uh, two charges make crystal ball scout and reveals and it will be really really okay and in this um drop uh, uh item drop um category so what was the thing that remo didn't think through he didn't uh, say it for crystal ball, but for ah, the far okay. side. Okay, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got okay. him there, bro. Yeah, I, got <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the same mechanic, actually. But yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that is not bad if they can code it, which I don't, I'm not too sure about that. Maybe um, we see into the inner skirts of the map or something. I don't know. They already, we already know they did something wrong with coding the lava spawns. I think. Yep. They both they don't split. They're more fast, but they do more damage or something. So, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, stuff like that is cool, I think. Or any like change that are cool, but I also think we have a lot of potential to work within the parameter parameters of the game. And since like the list already of now actually value changers are so big, adding reworks might be a bit ambitious, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Or wait, Bobby, Bobby OG. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Very, really nice suggestion as well. Actually, a suggestion I wanted to make for a special item, but it can be integrated in Crystal as well to give it an um, Ultra Vision upgrade. But then maybe uh, keep it um, on a tier 3 uh, item drop table. Isn't that broken? Yeah, because otherwise you just get... I mean, if you really didn't like Night Elf having Ultra Vision at tier 1 against Orc, they might just get it back right. That change. I think that's a huge. Yeah, plot that it could might be, be unfair. It might be really strong. Yeah, but a really strong crystal ball, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would be. <laughs> it's well, time. I, I, I like the level two and Hawk can stack them. It can have like stack six crystal balls and arc mesh. Be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's too strong, so we can reduce. But I like the idea to integrate. To, to integrate mechanics of the other races in a smaller way, like in a yes. weaker way into items. Yeah. So maybe make it ultra vision, yeah. but not as much as the night of ultra vision. So give it, I know, plus it's, um, I don't really know the numbers of the vision actually. So m make it like the half of the ultra vision upgrade and put it into the crystal ball, for example. But the, the, the problem stays the same that it has a use case that doesn't stack. So either reveal sure. or night vision or something, but you place it on the camp that is crept uh, uh, or a camp that is uh, quite often on the map. So, I mean, if um, you give it like a small ultra vision, it could stack, right? Like, let's say the first gives you fifty ah. range of vision, and then the second one it stacks, yeah. and you have a hundred extra vision. True. Then what it, it would stack actually, but it it's still a bit weird. 
It is. I would move it. I, I, I would. I, I like the idea to to reduce it to the uh, drop table of the second level, but then um, make it um, to a camp where um, that that is not too present on the map. So, for example, like the illusion sentry ward drop yeah. table. So I like it. Yeah. All right, we got an, we got another caller waiting. It was yeah, I was about to say, do you have anything else, or shall we get another person on the line? No, it's fine. See nice. you guys. Thanks, mate. Bye bye. Bye bye. I have to leave, Mr. Neo. All right. I have some you, stuff to do. Do you have duties for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. We're all busy yes. here. <laughs> but it was great having you. Made some great points, and we'll discuss everything at length tomorrow. Whew. Yeah, it was fun. See you tomorrow. Take care, bye, man. Ah, good guy, Dondo. Good to have him by my side to explain things like turn rate and collision size properly. Um, I will get another caller who was here last time with me. And the person who is maybe responsible for the fire law changes, 481. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going? Well, pretty good now that the changes uh, to the PTR are done. Yeah, I thought I just wanted to <laughs> come up and make a few uh, additional comments about my Fire Lord suggestion. I feel a little responsible for it. And I just want to say first and foremost, like when I was talking about the Fire Lord, I was just kind of making like a throwaway suggestion about like, oh, he should get buffed. Oh, make his make his spawn split faster. And I thought about it a little bit more. And I thought, you know, if I was in charge of it, I don't think I would make them split faster. but once they split, they time out really fast. Isn't that the case already? That they have a f f uh, faster expiration time. Yeah, but like, like, so if you have uh, one, once it splits, like, I, I, unless you put like unholy frenzy or bloodlust on them, then you almost never see them split a second time, and. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as like the improvements that were made to the Fire Lord, like I like the incinerate uh, mana reduction. I don't think I necessarily agree with what I said last week about the Fire Lord split reduction. I, having thought about it a little more, I thought I was just, I was just kind of making a throwaway comment, <laughs> and I definitely don't like the uh, volcano damage increase. I feel like that kind of puts it on par to like Starfall and. I think the I think volcano is kind of fine where it is where it's like good for clearing out like towers and farms and good with stun but like when you were talking about like it like destroying bases I think that's just a little too much. Yeah, I mean it does 2250 damage now that is uh what well, two thirds of a castle I guess so that is uh that is pretty strong. But yeah, you yeah. got to be careful what you say here on the stream, mate. They are listening, apparently. A apparently <laughs> so. And uh, I, I had no idea that my throwaway comments were going to be taken seriously. Same thing with Save Orcas. So <laughs> uh, I, like the, I like the Headhunter health increase. I'm, I'm a Headhunter fan myself. Yeah, that should definitely give uh, some variety back. Desperately needed variety. Um, is there anything else that you particularly like or don't like in this update? Um, as far as the A-bomb reduction, collision reduce, and the turn rate, I kind of agree with Starshape. Like, they don't need that. Like, nobody, I mean, I realize that A-bombs aren't necessarily like a massed unit, like the way, say, knights or bears are, but I just don't think it's necessary. Okay, question here. Did you try it already? How they look and feel and behave? No, I have not. Are are they like ghouls now? I don't know, because I had no time to test it. I had to get it on the stream, but I thought you guys might have uh, played around with it. So I don't know. I, I want to test it first before I make a comment. That's that. fair. But I, I do have to go. I just wanted to right. <laughs> give my quick two cents thought on that and just say, sorry, if, if Fire Lord ends up being broken... Don't come after me with a pitchfork. We will. You know, it's the internet, man. We will. And you deserve it probably <laughs> as well. <laughs> I probably do. <laughs> Thanks for the call in, man. Have a good time. Yep. Have bye a good bye. one, man. All right. 
Next up, we got a person who I thought would be the world's best player with the patch um, if the other changes went through, but now his esports career is in shambles because Devotion Aura got nerfed again. Lemass, what's up, dude? I can't hear you at the moment if you're saying something. Hello. Uh, there we go. Lemass, what's up, dude? And you're gone again. I can hear you. I, I, can I hear you? Ah, yeah. No, it's good. No, it's going gone. Hello there. Hello. You sound too happy for the devotion aura change that I've seen here. I was never a big fan of it. Really? Uh, yes. So because if this goes through, everyone will no longer fight me and just like me. Because <laughs> no one was going to try to win a fight against me. <laughs> uh, to... Uh, some people out there who might not be familiar with you. You play Pally Rifle in pretty much every matchup, right? Except Human Mirror, then I need to go Pally Footman opening. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Alright, so as a human player, what do you think of the changes? Well, I'm kind of scared of Nightlove changes. About the fun of knife change and, you know, potential laming with it. And this is like indicator of you cannot go to the late game against Warden. You need to tier two, tier three push her, or she was going to evaporate your economy. And yes, there are some, you know, possible like Zeppelins, micro to save workers, etc. But in the long run, it will never work. Yeah, she so, will come just once again, and the one time you're too slow, they're all dead. Yeah, exactly. And also this. Tier 2 push will be harder to execute, or Tier 3 for the uh, Undeads, uh, because of the Druid of the Cloud buffs. So I'm kind of scared how this is going to look like, and is it possible to either go to the late game against Warden, which probably not, or to Tier 2, Tier 3 push her, timing push. Like, how to approach her. Are you more scared of the Fan of Knives uh, buffs or the Blink buffs? I mean, I overall don't like Blink because, like, it's make her too much MOBA. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like, super hard to catch her, super hard to save units with with it uh, because she can always go in and go out, especially with level 2 Blink. Like, it's the most uh, powerful spike for her right now, like, uh, in case of defenses and mobility. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of scared of it, how it's going to look like. All right, since you're a human player, I want to ask you about the change to the keep. Uh, the food has been increased from 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. Is that something that helps you? I mean, right now when I'm on 48 foot, I need to make another farm to make another caster currently uh, with my build order with rifles and casters. So now I can fit extra unit with it. Uh, except uh, without building an extra farm. So I would say this is like life improvement, you know, change. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with this. It will not break the game. Like one farm is like cost you 80 gold, 20 wood. So it will not uh, slow you like, so, sorry. It will not uh, make you like too fast yeah. in case of like getting army, etc. And you can make like triple casters and then make adapt training etc so yeah i like this change overall like it's a nice buff to tier one uh, sorry tier one base playstyle or a uh, human uh, which currently is dead yeah pretty, pretty much yeah that's true that's good to hear because i think that's exactly what they want from this change uh is there anything else that you're excited about or scared about I am kind of don't understand why they change uh, Devotion Aura to those numbers. Uh, currently it's three, uh, sorry, two, 3.5 into 5. And now it's case 1.5 every time. With those changes, it's 3, 4, 6. So level 2 Devotion Aura gives you only one armor. Which just... When I think of it, I usually end up with like level 4 Paladin at the end of the game. 
and I will probably never pick level two devotion aura because it's either you get plus one armor on everything, or you have divine shield that will yeah. save a lot. I guess they try to make it so the uh, it will be easier to for a paladin for the early game with extra armor plus one. Uh, but yeah, like currently, I don't see scenario where I, when I pick level two devotion aura. So if you had to pick, would you rather go for the old values or the new values? Mm, I mean, this is the buff of poly rifle. I will take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, wh why not? <laughs> but, uh, but I think they will set up this to two for six. And because then actually level two means something plus okay. two armor, and it will be more straight up. Also, I I am not sure if devotion aura need to be changed. Like paladin is good in fights right now, and uh, you don't need if you go of course pala first. You don't need to buff him in fight actually, but outside of it. So. Either it will be HP region or movement speed. I, I'm not saying that you should put it there, but just an example. Mm -hmm. What you can do to improve poly rifle strategy. Like it's better to do something outside the fight, like extra base defense, as I said, movement speed, HP region, something that will help you catch up with opponent, uh, push him back, not literally just late game fights. We are okay with, at this stage. Is the militia duration something that helps you in that regard? Uh, I try to not use too much militia in the early game because you need a lot of wood, then you mm -hmm. need to tag, and then you need to gather a lot of wood because you need long range rifle, probably second building, second hero, and you would like to also have plus two attack up, uh, upgrade. So this will help a lot in case of one camp and then you have five seconds faster to come back or five seconds faster creeping but overall it will not change too much in case of pally rifle all right very good insights from a pally rifle player um is there anything else well i don't think so i just want to point out one thing about fire lord does it to mana incinerate isn't too much I don't know. It feels like nothing. It feels like nothing. Um, maybe they will end up in the middle, as always. I, I hope so, because if you go AM first and then go for the Fire Lord, you always have it active. Yeah. Is that is it strong, though? Like, is it that strong? It takes quite some time to be noticeable, no? I'm not sure. When I was playing against Fire Lord first and he go level to incinerate, I already feel those punches. Okay. So it might be AM Fire Lord against, for example, Demon Hunter to put oh. more pressure on him, if, especially if he, there is no evasion. True. Um, that's it. And of course, re re revert circle changes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The best. Okay. Thank you very that's much it. for the call, dude. Good evening. Thank you. See ya. Bye. See ya. All right. Lines are empty. I would like to take one more call or two. If you have an opinion on the patch and want to say something, uh, apparently the Blizzard people are listening. Before we go into uh, our big discussion tomorrow. Yo, we got someone. We got someone on the line. Rhythm, what's up, dude? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Have to boost you yeah, a little bit, I great. guess. But there you go. Uh, okay. Who are you and what's the reason you call in? So I usually make maps and talk shit. <laughs> and today I'm here because Orcas dumped on me some, some editor work without telling me that he would be the main guest tomorrow. <laughs> You're very actually, good on the shit talking part already. I like that. Yeah, and actually, I taught him how to map, so he should have told me. All anyway, right. anyway, um, do people know a map of yours? Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe four v four. I made North Ar North Marsh Ruin. Maybe mm -hmm. that one. Other than that, I usually lurk around and help people and nice. make my failures. <laughs> nice. So All right. What do you have to say towards the patch? Well, I am very happy about the neutral movement movement speed changes because uh, they change how creeps aggro with units. Because oh. actually creeps aggro depending on whether the unit is slower than they are. Which is the reason why uh, water elementals are focused first. But when a creep is bloodlasted, it treats every unit the same. Ah. Because then every unit is slower than them. Uh, which has been a problem with... Uh, do you remember when W3 Champions made the winter maps yes. for Christmas or whatever? Yes. That players were losing their minds because creeps didn't aggro the proper way. <laughs> yes, I do. And that was, this one was the main issue about that. So I'm very happy to see this. But overall, I think I'm not too happy about the item changes. Mainly because they seem to lack a vision or some sort of focus. They seem very reactive. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think that you could put together so many stat line combinations and make so many new items to fit the pool with different stats that, that can be balanced around level 2, level 3 and so on. But they seem to be just shifting things around trying to see what lands, which i not too much of a fan of. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, it feels uh, a bit visionless, um, but for that to be a new item you would probably need a new graphic for the item as well right and maybe they struggle with that i don't know i don't know i mean there's so many assets that you do not see in melee maps that you could pull from campaign or miscellaneous stuff that True. i honestly like it's a lot of effort that that's it i think so what would be an example of an item that you would create mm. So, for example, I would put uh, the circlet, I would leave it 222 and just put it on in the shop. You can only buy it from the shop and it stays there and everyone is, is happy, mm -hmm. for example. Other than that, I, would, I think I would play more with, um, with main attributes and secondary attributes. So maybe that would be a way to also balance the pool between finding the best items and the not so good ones if for example instead of being sleepers plus three agility it was plus two agility and plus one main attribute it maybe it's still not ideal but it still would uh, would make them a bit more comparable the best items to the not so much mm -hmm. is it I hard to code that not not at all i've already <laughs> done it okay all right like not at all it's it's quite easy actually well yeah it's an opinion worth as any other all right sounds good so far um from a map maker's perspective is there anything that you would like in a future patch well i would like uh for orcas to make me the main balance <laughs> the balance maker for, for Warcraft 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably a great idea from what I've heard yes. today. Yeah. Yes, but, uh, but Orcas told me that he's a bit short on change before he can buy Microsoft. So it, it will take a while. <laughs> okay. uh, other than that, I don't know. I usually, honestly, I just dick around with mapping and, and that's it. Uh, I, I let other people say what they want for the mapping. I'm, I'm already good. <laughs> All right. Very good to hear uh, that the neutral movement speed thing has an impact. I think uh, very few one-on-one -on -one people know that. So it was good to have you on, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Rhythms, everybody. There we go. Maybe we take one more. If someone has something to say that, it, that wasn't mentioned yet. Come on. Back to Warcraft Discord in the peon. Boro, I welcome you. Cien, thank you for the sub. Uh, Pimps, thank you for the 74 month. Buttcrumbs, thank you for the gifted sub. Tsunad for the 14 month. Circlet back, Pog. Mm, 
not pog at all, dude. Hellbish for the 17 month and Mac Alpina for the 3 euro. Congratulations. Qbert, I see you in the chat all the time. Why are you not with me here? That's a good question, isn't it? I think it is. Did someone work if Echo Pulse work? Uh, did someone test if Echo Pulse work since the patch? Uh, nope. Just a little. I I haven't heard about that yet. Um, yeah, there was a report in the chat earlier just to mention this. Um, Fire Lord lava splits on PTR still split at the 15 hit mark, like pre-patch, but they got higher damage from auto attacks. That sounds wrong. According to Chuddy, the collision size change now makes A bomb in line with Grunt's pathing wise. Yeah, that's something something I gotta or we gotta test, I guess. Are you going to have the weekly cup with PTR this week? I'm very, very sure. Um, I'm also very sure that the changes are already on the War 3 Champions ladder, uh, PTR ladder. They have an extra section on uh, the launcher. So if you go to non-melee and, and then go to PTR one-on-one, -on -one, the updates should be included already. On War 3 Champions. So you don't have to download the PTR. Just go to War 3 Champions and play it there. What's up, bro? <laughs> Yo, Bird! You are complaining the entire evening about this patch. Now tell me why. Yeah, I mean, I think the patch just doesn't really address the issues that are actually in the game. Um, what are the I think issues? You did say well... <laughs> How much time um, you got? If we're yeah, I mean, we can go over it, I guess. I mean, I'm not obviously an absolute expert, has to be said. But what's clear is, is that there's still a few things in the game that are not particularly um, fair, let's say, or perhaps, you know, they're not quite in order. Uh, Gargs come to mind. Um, the state of Orc at the pro level, for example, you know, hasn't really been addressed. I think the buffs that we propose there don't really tackle that. Um, everything is very sort of sweeping and general, you know? Nothing feels very particularly targeted at like, okay, let's fix this race because of the, these specific issues or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't want to go through the entire list. Obviously, it'll take us a, a long time, I think, and we've heard a lot of other people's inputs. Your resident uh, expert, Don Delari, of course, has uh, gone through them meticulously with you already. For me, the, the bash change in particular is definitely meme tier. That has to be said. Um, I don't see any reason to make it more damaging than it currently is. I think the percentage also currently of 20, 30, 40 is also more than acceptable. I think you could argue to buff the damage a little bit, but I don't think anybody thinks that Bash is like an underutilized or weak spell. Very interested to see how the militia changes are going to play out, though. I think, you know, this was already mentioned too, that for a long time, humans have been asking to revert the original nerf that changed it to 40 seconds. Perhaps it opens some new doors. Um, we'll see. Um, I'm definitely curious to see how it'll play out. I think it's okay. Um, and it's not too, too strong. Devotion Aura, I think having 3, 4, and 6, for example, is just aesthetically like unpleasing to the eye. Having this bizarre gap. You know, you've got an uneven number. Why not 4.5%? Sure, uh, sorry, 4.5 armor. That, then it would be a 1.5 increase every level. Yeah, I think yeah. that just seems fair. You think six um, armor seems fair? It, it's a ton, but to be fair, you would need level three aura, which generally speaking is going to be a level seven paladin. Maybe even more than that, potentially. Um, is it strong enough to pick it over level three holy light on level five? I'm not too sure. I was about to ask that because nine yeah. armor, it was pretty much a no-brainer to take it over yeah, holy light. Yeah, that's definitely a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, but with six, yeah, that that is definitely changing uh, the skill order again, I guess. Yeah. I think, for example, just quickly looking through the changes, like buffing keep and castle food, I think the keep idea is nice because you get to an even 50 food and then an even 80 food. 
The castle plus 16 food instead of 12 means that you build one less farm by the end of the game. Largely irrelevant, I would say. So having a more even 1580, I think, is better, like how Save Orcas was originally proposing. Um, Emulation changes, I think, are just largely unneeded. I think the spell is almost in a perfect state. I think it needs you know, a slight bit of adjusting with the turning on and turning off to make it actually have somewhat of a penalty. I think that's perfectly fine, but there's no reason to touch the damage um, at all, in my opinion, although it is a tiny nerf. But is there any reason to further reduce its efficacy? I don't think so. It was a Dondolara um, suggestion. To reduce it again? Yeah, well, it, he put it in a paper months ago. Uh, now they picked this, this value. Um, so, yeah, we can blame him if it's too weak. <laughs> well, I think it's... I think it's already in an okay state damage-wise. Um, it's far from the craziness that we had uh, when it was first buffed. I think kind of they missed the mark a little bit with Mana Flare, which I'm sure is going to be going into the, the, you know, be the deeper dive tomorrow. The range is not really the issue. The fact is just the damage is completely absurd and overtuned. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not wrong, the way it works is that a 25 mana cost spell is enough to completely trigger the full damage because they changed the factor from 3 to 4. So before you needed to cast like a 30 mana spell to do 90, because it used to be 90 as well, the maximum damage. And now it needs to be a 25 mana spell to do 100 damage. And it doesn't just damage the target as well, it also hits all targets. So three fairy dragons can quickly wipe out a whole back row of casters, which is just, you know, obviously not balanced. Uh, the range will help a tiny bit in terms of maneuverability for the human, but the issue is just the damage. It's just far too much up front. I, I mean, really like that they're just... Oh, sorry, go ahead. They have to dive a little deeper into the army, right? So it should be easier to kill them. But then the problem is that a mana flare fairy dragon is like 15 armor or something. So it's not it's not that yeah. easy to kill in the first place. Yeah, they get plus 12 in mana flare form. So they are really tanky. Um, you could even look at reducing the armor potentially because your only counter are rifles and gyros, mm -hmm. both of which don't have like insane, insane damage against single target. Um, and in these messy late game fights, like the human has to reposition so much to deal with them. So, yeah, I think uh, damage, maybe the armor could be looked at. I think again, missing the 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 mark here with fan of knives. The the problem with fan of knives is that it no longer, with one auto attack, could reliably insta kill uh, acolytes and peasants. I don't know if we want a world where it's back to that state again. I'm sure all elves do, but it's. Something that's definitely unfun, but then it is also kind of essential for the hero to function. It needs to be able to lame economy, but I guess making it more powerful in straight up combat could be enough because it is a very, very big buff to be able to hit seven targets. Um, so we'll see. Maybe it will make the Warden's combat efficacy strong enough to, you know, not you, have her be so reliant on laming economy. Did, uh, do you see her now versus Garks? Or, of, like, functioning versus Gargs. I mean, Warden was never really bad against Gargs. Um, Fan of Nice has always been good against Gargs, apart from, well, not exceptional, obviously. It doesn't It's not as insane as, like, Nova or anything like that. The trouble for her was the early game, dealing with the, the fast expansion from Undead. But I think, technically, against Gargs, you know, having Warden Panda is a pretty nice combination. And definitely makes her a lot better, though, uh, for sure, against that. So that would be helpful. Um, giving back a little bit of mana to the druid of the claw, I think is not too, not too significant. I think that's okay. Um, that probably makes it easier to cast. Does it actually change any breakpoints? I am not sure because I can never remember how much mana they get with an upgrade. Yeah, exactly. It changes the actual amount because there's like a increase, right? And yes. um, maybe it allows them to rejuve and transform immediately out of the. Oh, they already could do that, though. I don't know, actually. But what, what if this changes anything, really? I think 10 is not massive. Um, but I think it, it couldn't hurt, to be honest. I don't think it's particularly significant. Changing abominations and fiends. Oh, my God, this is beautiful. <laughs> Obviously, a this little is... bit of an undead player bias here, but my God, those units are horrendous. This is interesting because some people say it's really good and some people say it's not noticeable at all. Did you try it out already? No, no, I haven't tried it out. So how do you know it's beautiful? Well, the concept is beautiful, Neil. Very good. 
Okay. <laughs> I mean, especially reducing the abomination's collision size. That's just the worst in the world, trying to move them into combat. And, you know, making even more than one or two already starts to feel terrible. And having the units be more responsive in general, able to actually change upon their axis faster is is definitely beneficial for Undead, with two of their units being particularly bad at doing so. So would you say this is rather a quality of life change than a balance change? Well, in theory, with Fiends, like any ranged unit, if they have a quick turn rate and also a fast attack animation, then that would improve their ability to kite because they will be able to actually maneuver more easily, let's say. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to change too much. I think at the very highest level, um, the Undeads can already basically kite as perfectly as possible with Fiends. I'm not sure that will actually change too much. Um, perhaps for lower level players, it would be nice though, especially when you go up against mass air from any race in general, um, or just trying to kite, you know, across the board will be will be easier. But definitely not something that pro undeads require. I think undead is already like, in their hands in a strong enough state, basically the the way the units actually work. But it definitely couldn't hurt to make them feel better because Lord knows we need some quality of life in this game. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Um, okay, I said I wasn't going to go through change by change, but I mean, that's just what's happened, hasn't we it? We kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I always today. enjoy time with you if we're in gym discord or here. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, sweet. But I'll try not to keep you too long because obviously we've all, you know, you've had several people talking about the changes already. Um, but yeah, Bladestorm, I think the nerf, uh, the buff, the, the initial initially proposed buff wasn't actually that crazy. I know it's a huge percentage technically, but Bladestorm is already incredibly niche. Um, pretty common in 4 versus 4 and of course FFA did you um, see the updated see... Bladestorm yesterday on the cast <laughs> I mean I can picture in my mind how much damage it does Yeah. can you really because I saw well, 7 necromancers disappear in a second despite a heal scroll <laughs> and heal wave it was strong yeah. it is strong it is strong but how often do you get level 6 in 1 versus 1 which is ultimately what the game is balanced around right yeah uh, I mean, we casted games where this happened, but yeah, every mm. e every blue moon. Yeah, exactly. Which is a shame because it's such a sick ultimate. Obviously, um, having it at one sixty might would be would be one sixty. You know, DPS would probably be too strong if it was so commonplace in one versus one. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's not. So keeping it one sixty would have been reasonable. One forty is still a decent buff, and I think one of the only things they actually hit the mark on apart from maybe you could argue militia duration, is reverting the HP nerf on headhunters. Yes. I think when we all saw that nerf be proposed, I think everybody was like, no matter if they hated headhunters, was like, this is kind of the wrong way to nerf this unit. It's already squishy. And it, the, 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 the nerf was really noticeable, losing that 25 HP. Doesn't sound like a lot, but they die pretty quick now, so I'm glad to see the HP returned. Um, and I think... Probably no further adjustments are needed, especially given the state, you know, especially given how orcs are currently performing um, at the top level. Yeah, and of course the headhunter change goes hand in hand with the cheaper upgrades. So you can yeah. acquire like three, one a lot faster than before. Yeah, I'm actually slightly concerned about those orc buffs. Um, orc is an extremely wood demanding race. Yeah. Uh, if you're trying to go to tier three, if you play tier two, it basically doesn't affect you, but. Um, it's funny because I've been playing a lot of 4 versus 4 lately and trying to get, you know, like reinforced spikes, expansions, tier 3 upgrades, you know, getting armor upgrades especially are extremely costly for Orc. I didn't see any reason to buff or, or I guess reduce the cost of either the attack upgrades, like the melee or ranged upgrades. They're actually both pretty cheap um, and scale quite decently they don't become outrageously expensive but the armor upgrade is just absurd it's like 375 of each golden lumber on level three yeah. which is just a joke um so I'm not a big fan of that and i'm I, I do think that the armor could stay with being buffed and reduce the lumber increment but the other two upgrades i kind of disagree with okay fair take um fire lord man where do we begin with this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stage is yours, dude. I'm leaning back. 
pretty much gigantic buffs across the board. Um, I think Soulburn is an extremely hard spell to potentially fix or change to make useful, which obviously they haven't touched here. Because um, it's such a do-it-all kind of averagely spell in one go. It provides a silence, provides a damage reduction effect, and a burn over time. And it's cool that it has all those effects, but it does everything so averagely um, on a hero that already struggles so much for mana um, due to the primary ability, of course, costing 150 mana per cast is just crazy. But I think that's kind of justifiable given that they now split with three fewer shots, the lava spawns, and incinerate big two mana. Now, I think incinerate could have used being reduced to three or four mana, but I think actually the way the spell functions is kind of what makes it weak. The fact that you drop the stacks immediately upon hitting another target is the biggest weakness of the spell. Um, I don't know if there's any way to fix that. I think, you know, whoever's doing the balancing gives me the impression that they're just able to basically tweak numbers here and there and not really introduce completely new concepts, especially ones that may or may not affect the game code or engine. Yeah, but um, Incinerate is a debuff, right? So you could just increase the duration of the debuff uh, so it matches the attack speed of the Fire Lord better. That should be a simple value change. So things that are logical like that don't always work in the editor. And uh, when I went <laughs> to test how Fan of Knives worked, there is literally a field that tells you how many maximum targets Fan of Knives can strike. Yep. And it's all set at zero in the editor. It's just zero. Yep. And the way that, and this is what I didn't understand when Razor Moon initially said about the the way it works, this artificial, is that it is indeed artificial. If you edit those values, it doesn't change anything. It's like the field is dead. It doesn't work. So either it would work or it wouldn't. That would require some testing. Uh, um, let me see. Incinerate in the editor. Where would that be? Uh, under abilities. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. But, but where would be the the cool neutral thing? passive? I think heroes. Yeah, yeah, yep. And then Fire Lord, or I guess you could scroll down and see where Incinerate is in the menu. Okay, I found also, it. But crumbs in the meantime, gifts and subs to Amaranth and Pokemon. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Glad that you're educating yourself <laughs> on uh, the new Warcraft 3 balance. So, <laughs> uh, Too funny. it seems to have a four second duration. But I don't know if the, actu if the stacks are actually maintained. If you hit different targets, that would also need to be clarified. Okay. My opinion was is that they actually drop if you hit a different target, but I don't know that for a fact. I don't think so, to be honest. I don't think they drop. Okay. But can you attack fast enough so you reapply the debuff is, I guess, the question. I guess four seconds in any sort of attack move situation is probably not long enough to maintain the debuff on multiple targets. So, But in any case, two mana is makes the, the spell at least viable to yeah. leave on 24-7. Yeah. I mean, you can test it and report oh, back man. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Split requirement, yo. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Fire Lord is already an amazing creeper in the early game. Definitely one of the best in theory. Like you can just sweep up the map if you were left undeterred. Um, the fact that it now takes three fewer shots, I think we're going to see so much, <laughs> so many uh, live responds. Um, obviously, it also makes it stronger for potential rushes as well. And I think also as a first hero for Night Elf, it's also viable. Not at the pro level, obviously. Um, but obviously, you know, good old Hot used to play like that at a pretty decent level. I think it's not weak by any means, and this just makes it even stronger. Which is fun because he's a cool hero. He's got that pimp walk, man. He's got he that does. swagger. He is the Conor McGregor of Warcraft. <laughs> he really is. So, I'm definitely not offended by this change, but it could potentially prove imbalanced. And we would just have to see how it plays out. And then Volcano. I mean, I watched that clip on Facebook, Neo, of the volcano that Razor Moon had. Oh my Cass God! You had. of all the platforms, you use Facebook. We've we've discussed this before. Yeah. Like we're Facebook friends. <laughs> True, we are. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I saw. I actually see a lot of the clips there on Facebook. And yeah, the the volcano was just insane, right? Like in the right situation, 
it's like one of the most powerful ultimates. It's just absolutely yeah. bonkers. So changing the damage to 150, it also doesn't specify if this is like unit damage or structure damage or whatever, because it's calculated differently in the editor too. But let's assume it's just damage across the board. That's pretty crazy. Um, but that's fun. Again, we don't see Volcano at the pro level. It's all good. Um, for B, two of the biggest bugbears, apart from going on to the reverted changes, which thank God they reverted the movement speed nerfs. I was a huge critic of that. I think that would just make the game feel worse across the board. Those heroes were brought up to par for a reason. There was a huge discrepancy between agility heroes and mounted heroes. So to have them be more even was better. So to decrease the non-mounted and non-agility heroes' movement speeds was just a terrible idea. And we would see an even like more pronounced imbalance there with Lich and Archmage in particular, because that is already a very volatile matchup in the early game. And to see the Lich be even slower would definitely not be nice for that particular matchup. Yeah, very, very glad they um, walked back on this. People are demanding the clip with the uh, Fire Lord, so I got it up on Instagram. Can I do this full size? I don't even think so. Okay. I I Instagram desktop, guys. It's horrible. Sorry about that. That but, does sound bad. <laughs> oh, well, well, well. Can I... Zoom in on this? No, not really. But here you see it. An entire screen of units <laughs> stunned. I mean, damage is neglectable when you stun an entire screen for this long. Um, means that you there, 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 there can't be a disable against it, of course. It is a channeling spell. But yeah, that is... Uh, it can be very strong. <laughs> There's a second one as well. Oh my god. It's gorgeous. It's that, definitely that, one of the, It's such a beautiful ultimate. Um, definitely one of the most enjoyable to see in the game. It's just yeah. crazy how good it is yeah. in the right circumstances, which I think is fine to make it even stronger. I mean, I kind of feel like, why not? It's fun, and it will have no bearing on professional play, which is the most important thing to consider. Yeah. Um, and of course, the last reverted change, the rusty meme meme pick. Thank thank God. Like, yeah. just never, never even contemplate adding an item like this into the game again it'd be the same as adding like a dagger item that gives you a 15 percent chance to crit <laughs> you know what i mean just yeah. giving heroes passives when they potentially already have passives for example you could bash crit in theory with the blade master which i tested in the editor um it's just it's laughable and i'm glad that it's gone for me Two of the most interesting things out of all this is the crystal ball change and the staff of teleportation change. Um, my opinion isn't fully decided on how I feel about this. I think putting crystal ball into tier two, objectively, it makes sense as in we need to lower the power level of the item because it's a bad item and doesn't belong in the third, uh, like the permanent level three permanent item um, category with claws, pendant of energy, ring of regen, like all these really strong items even Ring 5, in theory. And Crystal Ball is so unbelievably bad. And it, in my opinion, has actually been plaguing balance for quite a while, this item, because of how bad it is. Um, if your opponent finds Clause 8 and you find Crystal Ball, I mean, you're just in so much pain inside. Um, but leaving it in the level 2 permanent items, where we've also now got, you know, Quite a few items because the circle has been moved back as well. I'm not sure if the item pool is now too diluted for the level two items, you know what I mean? Because again, I still think in the early game, if you find a crystal ball in your first camp, it doesn't provide enough information for you at the start to warrant having so early on and is still inferior to almost every other drop. I mean, your opponent getting a circlet now, of course, since it's back into the tier two pool. Um, and you getting crystal ball, I think it's still just as big a feels bad, man. Um, in my opinion, I could do with just removing crystal ball entirely. Um, and maybe revisiting it. But I would quite like to see it just completely removed for a time. And then we can discuss like, oh, is there a way to re-implement this item now that we've let things settle a bit? Um, how do you feel about that, Neil? Mm, I feel like it's always psychologically bad to take things away of a 21 year old game when the things that were promised to us were kind of bad in in general so having it 
I think this this is something that would help an amateur or a starting player a lot because on lower levels you're and I of course include myself you're in general bad at scouting um but on a level three it gives too much gold to not sell it but if you find it early and can scout with that could be pretty convenient for for lower level players um but of course we don't balance around that uh so yeah it's 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 still bad um i liked scars's suggestion to put it in the consumable tab basically with uh watch award and stuff but yeah it's i have but i think it can't do that much damage if you put it in level two um i have a way bigger issue with the circlet being being back on level two so we can talk about that because that's kind of the the last time on the menu i suppose i guess yeah um, I, I talked about this at length but please add to the discussion so what's your very quick tldr opinion on circlet too strong too weak in way level two? too strong for level too two. strong yeah it's okay in, yeah. in comparison to we all know that it's better than every other item in that pool yeah um even ring plus four you know obviously being moved down from Permanent level three to two, it, it still doesn't come anywhere near close to the benefits that having plus two all stats provides, because it just provides you so much of everything across the board. Yeah. Um, all the stats don't just give you one bonus, they give you multiple bonuses. You know, agility giving you more armor and attack speed, and intelligence give you more mana and mana regeneration, you know, and strength, you know, you know the drill. Um, yeah, I think it's... I do kind of miss the circlets, not going to lie. <laughs> I do miss finding like two or three circlets. Nowadays, it feels really rare to even have one sometimes in your one versus one games. Because um, it's such an iconic item. But obviously, it's not good to look upon these things with rose-tinted glasses. So for the sake of balance, I think it's best to keep it in the level three pool. But then if so, I would really hate for Crystal Ball to be in the level two pool because with no circlet there, now you know, you're just going to find Crystal Ball more frequently, statistically speaking. I think I think we can all just agree we don't want, we just don't want to see Crystal Ball. <laughs> no, nobody's hoping and praying like, oh man, do you know what? If, if this camp drops me Crystal Ball right now, I would be pogging out. What if you reduce the cooldown on Crystal Ball? It's difficult to say. Um... I think what's clear at the top level of play is that being able to scan, you know, doesn't really change the impact of like how the the game's going to play out, you know, because it's you already have access to a scan via lab at the vast majority of your games. If you actually need to scan something, and um, for other situations, you can buy dust when it's combat situations or even sentry wards, of course, as well, which are probably the best one. Um. And then you've also got the ability to scout with almost all races anyway, with units. I, th I feel like its purpose is, is kind of already covered by different items. So... What if it yeah. reveals the entire map? <laughs> that's pretty funny. I mean... I mean... That's a, that's, that's, that's a scary thought. We can change so many variables, right? Like, of, of course, course yeah. we know the crystal ball in its... Uh, like as it is now for m many years and it's kind of a meme but before we remove it we can change a lot of stuff that the crystal ball yeah. has yeah I understand I mean it'd be, it'd be kind of interesting to see if Warcraft could ever enter like an experimental time where for like two or three months um, we could really test out balance and experiment with lots of different things without it yeah. affecting tournaments tournaments you could still choose to host in different patches right in theory <laughs> Um, I don't know how many people actually engage with the PTR. Maybe you know you should probably know this better than I knew. Like how many people actually take the time to go play something that isn't the standard ladder uh, in it's order to give feedback. Whereas if it was actually the balance, for example, that War Three Champions was played on, but then tournaments continue to be played on the last stable patch. I don't know if that'd be an effective way to get more to gather more feedback and explore avenues that we've never dared to touch because they would be too imbalanced you know or just too crazy or too out there like giving crystal ball the ability to reveal the whole map for five seconds i mean you would see everything that is correct obviously literally 
That's <laughs> just the thought of that is insane in certain situations. I'm just, I'm just making it. suggestions to not delete no, no, an item totally. immediately. I, it does Crystal Ball hold a special item. place in your heart, Neo? No, I is just that why don't, you don't want to remove it? I just think we shouldn't delete content, but rather add content and make stuff exciting instead of uh, putting it on the, on the shelf for half a year or whatever. That's fair. Maybe make it a consumable and it reveals the entire map once or twice. It's definitely fun. That's definitely, that would actually make it pretty fun to use. Um, and when you look at all the other consumables in the level 2 pool, presumably you're going to the... Still, if you could have that effect, you would probably still put it in amongst the yeah. Wand of Illusion, Replacement Potion, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Because all those consumables are pretty nice, but... Apart from Wand of Illusion, which is probably the only item that was ever like super imbalanced, of course, also Lightning Shield in a couple of situations was pretty broken too. Century Wars can be broken. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It sounds fun to give it a little try. Um, five second duration, perhaps. <laughs> you still have to look around the map quickly to see what's going on, right? Exactly. I guess it's not, it's not something that you just use and then you immediately gain benefit. You actually have to use your eyes and brain. Yeah. To... And that is, for a Warcraft uh, person, very, very hard. <laughs> Although I can imagine in team games how powerful this would be. Um, to be able to look, you could just quickly use it and then look quickly and see on the map, okay, who's where? Yep. There's two guys going this direction or one guy's going cross map here, yep. blah, blah, blah. Um, I think its application in team games would be incredibly powerful. But then again, it would probably be something you only get once or twice again. Yeah. All right, then let's wrap this up with a very, very short summary from you. Um, overall, the patch still misses the mark, unfortunately. The the actual concepts that are being introduced for, for the most part are quite weak and don't actually change anything of great significance. And the stuff that does is largely super imbalanced concepts, like making Bash completely broken, for example. Um but there are a few diamonds in the rough, you know, changing the collision and turn rates for the undead units, buffing the HP back to the way it used to be for troll headhunters, buffing fire, fire lord is cool. Um, the keep to 14 food is okay. And malicious duration is something that should be experimented with to see if that makes human a little bit more powerful. Um, oh, one thing we didn't talk about is staff of Tally having oh, two yeah. charges. Yeah. This one's complicated because in a couple matchups, especially um, Orc and Nita, for example, Blade Master versus Keeper, I think Staff is one of the most crucial items um, in that particular matchup. I think even potentially on Archmages these days, having Staff is incredibly good um, against Elf sometimes, so you need that mobility to drag the Elf to one side and then Staff to the main base and cancel stuff, these sort of plays. I don't know... It's it's just like the boots of speed war back in the day. We used to have one charge, and um, it's like oh, whoever gets the boots just like runs your hero down. So obviously, it doesn't have nearly the same effect. Um, and we've been used to playing this way since forever, basically with one charge. I do think there's an element of skill and in inverted commas being kind of aware of like right, I need to go get the staff of Telly or you know deny my opponent the staff of Telly um, to either disable their plays or enable my plays. Yeah, I think this this um, is not really addressing that issue, but when both players are really freaking good and they know that they have to have the staff and both are at the shop at the same time and it's just down to who has the luck of getting it. I guess we do have that issue in Warcraft, especially because ping is so variable too. We have, you know, so much international competition. Um, you know, obviously the ladder is completely global, so... It definitely leads to frustrating situations where you're like, I really wanted that staff and I can't use it now. Um, in any case, even though I do think there was actually an element of, say, skill about actually thinking about, right, I need to get the staff or I need to use the staff and deny it from my opponent or whatever. Did you like it when um, the boots changed to two charges? Yes, because there were so many instances where not getting the boots was horrendous, mm -hmm. especially for human players. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, Blade Master would buy boots and just chase your hero to death. Hmm. Great. Like, the, the most non-interactive gameplay in the world. There's so a hero is, just running your hero down. So how is Staff different? 
because it doesn't necessarily lead to the immediacy of a certain critical situation arising. It's not like, oh, now this agility hero with tons of damage has boots and now I can't escape and I'm just going to get run down and killed. The staff requires a lot of forward planning. Like most low level players never use staff because it's you need to actually yeah. plan out and be like, right, how am I going to utilize this staff, which has a one and a half minute cooldown to make a play or deny my opponent from making a play. And that requires a lot of heads up thinking about how to use it properly. Boots is literally just, I buy boots and I go fast. That's correct. So its application is simple and often leads to very immediate impact. The staff, not so much. Now, obviously, again, you know, top level plays, staff is pretty important for the most part. Um, sorry, the people in the comments are freaking hilarious. Um, <laughs> But I think it's not as imbalanced. You know, if we had both at one charge, being the, the boots would just be, in my opinion, so much worse okay. to keep it one charge. And obviously they changed it to two. I'm still in favor of putting it at two. It just removes that element of like, well, I lost due to ping or, or you know, those moments where you just don't get it for some reason your opponent does that so often happen in Warcraft. I think it's fine. Alrighty then. We uh, kind of disagree on that one. I love the staff change, but it's fair. We agree on a lot. Yeah, I like it too. I do overall like it as well that it's two, it's oh, okay. two charges. Okay, you, you sounded very very negative there. No, no, it's more, <laughs> I, I didn't mind it being one charge to begin with. Okay. Yeah. Um, but having it two is fine. Okay. I, I don't see the harm. All right, we're on a good track. And now they listen for three more hours to our suggestions and comments. And I think the next iteration will be even better with even more community suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Blizzard did reiterate that they would like to gather feedback and yeah. our suggestions. It's clear that they are paying attention yeah. um, to whatever people are saying, whatever channel of that reaches them via. And they do clearly take it on board. And I do appreciate that there is an attempt to branch out and do something different and off the wall, you know, like say, for example, buffing Bash, Bash to Oblivion. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very, very kind of sensitive in the scene. We don't like to have lots of changes. We don't, we, you know, most good players, and there's a lot of kind of, let's say, semi-pro to pro level players that could be quite unspoken, obviously, and have opinions on this and be like, oh, this is like the worst suggestion ever, which I am definitely neither of those things, but I am outspoken regardless and like memeing in the chat about how bad the changes are. But I still appreciate the effort. All right. I appreciate the time with you, Qbert. Uh, now we got two other p p uh, people on the line, so I kick you out. Sweet. Have fun. <laughs> Bye, mate. Cheers. All right. I hope he's here. We got Lamath back on the line who wanted to add one more thing. So go yeah. ahead. I want to add one more thing, more like a balance suggestion. And guess what? It's Palar Rifle versus Tier 1 Expanded. But <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, I guess we all agree that Undead have the advantage in this matchup because uh, after you build up the army, you come to the... Uh, you have long range rifles, you have blood mage, you come to your opponent and then you get stopped by the one Nerup Tower. So I was thinking how to force Undead uh, to fight on the equal term terms without those towers. And don't take me wrong, this is like a suggestion I just want to throw it in the air and see maybe I am missing something because I currently don't see any way to break the game with this. Dragon Hole Cloud available at tier 2. Because if you go and interrupt the towers, you can come in, you stop the towers, you force a fight without the towers, without uh, timing of the frenzy ghouls, etc. And this is way more balanced way uh, than to just go mortars and destroy the towers. Because if you are achieve it, your opponent have 1k gold and cannot spend it because he's supply block. Or your opponent kill your mortars and he stop your push completely. So that's my idea. And I just want to hear a feedback from you. Like, is it okay? Is it not okay? Hmm. And for me, like when I was thinking of it, it would be the best way to try to equalize this matchup without breaking the others. Hmm. But maybe I am wrong. I never thought about this, so this catches me off guard. Um, it would take quite some time, right? You need a Griffin Aviary, you need 
the cloud to research. You need shop and lumber mill also. Lumber mill, yeah. I so don't the timing could be later. Like, huh. I, I was always so thinking about other matchups, like it will not help you too much against orcs. You are not making dragon hoaks. And even if you do, they are bad in mass against towers. Yeah, they should be able to ensnare you and kill you. Also, uh, against Night Elf, there was strategy with mass dragon hoax, but it was already with tier 3. So there is also no way to like break the game there. Dragon hoax clouds are trash in human mirror, in my opinion. Yep. Gyros are just easily counter them. So I'm thinking, like, is it too much? Maybe it kills tier one expo for the undead if human don't go for the tier one expansion because the timing might be too good. But uh, I'm just leaving it like that. Right. Just, just, a su just a suggestion. Yeah, we can think about it. I, yeah, as I said, I don't hate it. Let's, let's uh, test it and think about it. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks, then. See ya. See ya. One more guest. Last guest of the evening because I like him so much. Razor Moon is back. Oh, hi, Neo. Hello, <laughs> everyone. Chat. What's up, dude? I saw your patch notes. You definitely uh, thought a lot about the current state and what you would like to see. And now we have a new iteration. So your thoughts, much appreciated. Oh, well, uh, thank you so much, Neo, for having me. In. So, the patch notes I did only in regards to the current PTR changes. I did not include any like outsides. I just like maybe tried to um, shape the di direction of where the PTR is going. But uh, I'm still working on a second paper with overall balance changes, and it's taken me so long because I'm reaching out to like human players and dead players, orc players, and I'm asking what's wrong here and there. I'm trying to make it like very convenient for every race because, you know, there is always the fear that the patch is going to be the last one and all of a sudden we're going to be stuck with whatever. <laughs> yep. And uh, there we go. So that's quite a huge PTR change list, to be honest. Uh, to begin with, I think militia duration, it's cool that we buff it back. Um, I think just looking from overall all the numbers uh, that are bringing up for the human race, this I think should be enough to fix human night elf matchup, just from looking at numbers. I like not sure the militia specifically would allow human players to get uh, new creep routes on Lost Refuge, Twisted Meadows, uh, other maps. So I think like that's gonna bring strategic variety, really nice change. The bonus, uh, batch bonus damage, um, it's not as concerning, but uh, for me personally as a night elf perspective, but like and that could definitely feel it, I think. But again, like at level four, Mountain King uh, is gonna have like batch level two. It's gonna be a less percentage, but more damage, right? So. Um, I don't think it's going to be broken for level 4 MK. Level 5, though, now I'm questioning, like, what do you go for? If with the 75 number, it was still obvious to me that, like, Bosch, I mean, Bolt or Clap would be still, like, a better spell to go for. And now it is 100. And uh, would it be worse taking, let's say, against Demon Hunter? Uh, if you, like, you say, like, I I'll not have mana due to mana burn, so, like, why wouldn't I go for Bash? So I think it's going to be something interesting, definitely. Uh, maybe 75 would be still a better number. I'm not sure, like, it needs testing, basically. So, the patch just came out, I couldn't finish, but the stand duration is something else. 2, 4, and 6. Like, 6 <laughs> seconds of passive ability stand is, for level 5 MK now, on top of 100 extra damage, um... Um, well, Blizzard, if uh, you know where I live, just share what you smoke out there, I guess, in, on this department, <laughs> because the, the numbers are literally... <laughs> the numbers are quite off. Yeah, uh, for this one. But uh, I, I think maybe like two, three, four seconds would be something very strong, but just like, I'm not even sure about this one. But the patch chance goes down. Devotion Aura, I think the numbers are good here. Like, 3, 4, 6 kind of makes sense, because level 5 Pally, you still want to take heal level 3. Uh, it's not making our super appear broken. Uh, I think it's going to be a good change. The food increase, it's a uh, shout out to... Um, oh my god, what was, what was his name? Save uh, the map maker. Save Orcas. 
Save workers, yeah, yeah, save workers, yeah, yeah. Save workers, shout out because I think this is a good change. I like it. Emulation cost to 10, completely agree here. I think 10 is a good number. Uh, I think that is a number that doesn't kill the spell and uh, also, like, it's it, this is good. The damage, uh, it's controversial. So, in order to fix uh, human versus night elf, um, I am kind of questioning this. So, to me, it almost feels like uh, immolation damage is really good versus human, but not good enough versus undead because undead has a speed aura and can kite you more. And like immolation is a spell that is kind of meant to stop the fast expansion, which was never really addressed in any way. And therefore, like here, I'm questioning this. Like it could be good for human. Uh, I agree on this department. Like maybe it is. It needs to be this versus human even. Uh, but versus undead, like there is no any early game compensation really because now we're getting double nerf and there is still fast expansion. Matchup is still like UD favoring. Uh, so I'm kind of questioning this mana flare. Uh, the range is not exactly correct here. So I think to fix it versus human again, we need some max damage cap. Uh, a cap to be actually uh, changed because the main problem is that like okay 100 range less but if your backline dies you know like same fast as before it just like you gotta uh, micro your fairies tiny lead better okay like this change makes me micro my fairy dragons and human still dies to it right it's just like weird change because I feel like the max damage uh, needs to be changed the fan of knives for warden it is a cool one uh, but I think people kind of a little bit overestimated because yesterday I was doing the PTR changes uh, note and I was comparing this with like Dreadlord uh, that costs like 100 mana more. Uh, I mean, uh, 10 mana more, it's 100 versus 90. But on the same hand, you know, like it hits mechanical units, TC hits buildings. Um, you can cast them blind. In other words, you could just come to the expo without getting hit by the arcane tower. Um, and like Ward needs vision. So usually you don't get fan level three uh before level five and at level four you would be still running with like shadow strike slash blink uh and only then you retrain so like level two change doesn't mean anything except for maybe uh i think it could open a, a play on the echo islands if you expand and then you creep board in level three uh, before UD comes over to cancel your expo, and maybe you're gonna use like fan level two to defend it against ghouls on that very specific map. That's like what I see in terms of amplification of level two. But uh, rest like two units more is good. But um, like th this is a good upgrade. I, I would just say like for Warden. Okay, the Druid of the Claw. It's a tiny bit better for bears again uh, on tier three. Ten mana is not really anything. Like it's still not double redrew. Uh, like, if you are fighting at your opponent's base uh, on a big map, by the time the Druid of the Claw is going to reach your army on that, like, far end of the map where you are at, uh, it's going to have double redrew by then. All other cases, once you're getting pushed, like, inside your base, you de timing push, etc., etc., this would not have any effect or little effect uh, on uh, Abomination Collision Size. So, uh, I actually witnessed today Insuperable and I think Licks fighting each other. So, in subset, that's a nerf because uh, Abomination needs to tank. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, Licks was saying that, like, uh, that's a buff because Abominations are super good. Now we can use them as bears. So, uh, I'm <laughs> not really sure what it does. Like, you know, if you need this unit to... Uh, rather tank a damage and use it as a face control guard, right? Uh, that stands in front and doesn't let anybody in and out, or you actually want to use it as kind of, you know, must bear slash night meta. So an interesting change. I could see that some use. Turn rate, okay. I don't think it does much. Crypt Fiend turn rate, um, it is okay. Uh, but uh, I feel like we're still missing a tiny bit uh, to my... Uh, degree so like speaking of undeads what i know is they have really hard matchup versus human like human i think is heavily favored against undeads and then undead is heavily favored against night elf and i feel like the problematic point here uh is the ghouls so uh ghouls with 35 frenzy is kind of crazy and overwhelming for the elf side of things um and also it's kind of 
you know, as I said before, unit basically, if you mess just by the concept, tier one units of any other race, eventually you, you, you're you usually getting punished for it. So if you mess mass archers as a night elf, uh, they're getting countered and there is no coming back. Uh, if you must grunts as orc, they're also like vulnerable. They have uh, their weakness to like magic, slow, etc. Um, if you must ghouls as undead, you're not really getting punished, whether you fast expanding or timing push, because they just work super well uh, and give you that like crazy DPS as it feels. So I think like. All of those changes, the Fiend, the Crypt, uh, need to go together. I think it's kind of missing uh, with a Frenzy Ghoul nerf to being 28 or maybe 30%. I'm not exactly sure on the number. I would still have to uh, talk more to Undeads about it because I also understand I played UD Race and uh, I kind of felt what it feels like versus work. I know what it is versus human. It is not easy, guys. I know, but like we have a problematic matchup too. So. You know, we've got to find some middle ground, I think, maybe. So, um, and that's kind of feel me on this one. Blade Storm, uh, 140 damage. Uh, I don't know if they took this number from me or someone else, but that's nice because, like, yeah. whenever they did it the previous time was too good. Uh, Troll Headhunter, uh, the new HP buff. I think this is good. Uh, if they ever need a nerf, uh, there is some parameter that's called attack damage point. Uh, it is the time that it takes the unit to start the hit. So right now it is very low. It's like point one or point some. It's, it's like super low for headhunters. And I think that parameter, if we ever have to like nerf headhunters, would be the one to work with. Why is that? Because on top tier level, orcs uh, use headhunters overwhelmingly versus like human and other race because they can hit and run. And this parameter, if we change it to like being half of the archer. So for archer, that's like 0. 0.7 something uh, of a second before like she's like, you know, taking the bow, arrow, like making that shot. Uh, and I think like if we change it to like being the middle in between what it is right now and an archer, that's going to be a good one because this would reduce hit and run potential for orc. So therefore it affects only top tier scene while it has no effect for like lower level orcs who just play ladder, love their headhunters and want to play them. I think this is like super nice change if we ever need to do this. Yeah, I saw uh, this in one of your previous uh, feedback thingies and I love that suggestion. Oh, not, thanks, not, Neo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not saying that, that, that we need it now, but uh, yeah, just to keep it in mind that this value exists, it's really good. Yeah, uh, the Fire Lord incinerate uh, from six to two. Oof, from one point of view, uh, the Fire Lord, like, it is a meme hero, obviously. Like, it cannot really do anything on a pro scene. But uh, incinerate used to be zero mana back to many, many, many years ago. It was just like a passive ability that used to uh, incinerate. Uh, in incinerate, I mean, uh, units, and it was super broken. Uh, it was back to the times when uh, Night Elves used to play Talons with Fire Lord Third, also because of incinerate, because it was doing the cool blow and uh, blowing animation for the Raiders and Grunts. Uh, now it is going to two. Um, I don't have an opinion yet on this one. I'll have to do testings. The lava spawns. I think somebody might have said it before me. I think they did this one incorrectly so yeah. what they did is they actually made it plus three instead of minus three they just kind of uh, i mean uh blizzard <laughs> if you still uh, like can share what you smoke you you, you know my number you know my account <laughs> please so let they me do know. know your number how do they know your number? I, I i i hope so <laughs> i mean I, i'm not sure <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, the Volcano, of course, could see some buff. Like, anyway, it's a super rare rule, doesn't break anything. Uh, the most kind of, I think, controversial here is Staff of Teleportation. So, Staff has two charges, and this both is good and bad. So, from one point of view, uh, there used to be those games where uh, it's either Keeper Decay or Keeper Blade. And uh, as for this old, like, must tier one headhunter called Alchemist Meta, uh, there used to be that moment in a game where you need to kind of fool the work player and you need to staff, uh, you just run against the direction of your creeping and you staff, like, to your units and you creep some. Uh, and now Blade would be able to split uh, his army with his grunt by the second staff and staff 
to where you're creeping. Therefore, it is actually a huge buff in terms of playing that style on the Orc Night Elf matchup. Uh, on the other hand, I kind of don't hate it because sometimes just a uh, player buys it from you and you're unable to staff. He gets like fast expansion in terms of human, along with like militia buff. Uh, but I would rather see this number as one because if we talk about like uh, the Tom of Retraining, uh, it was actually very valuable in some games. Let's say you're playing DH Emulation, and there is a human player who gets his supply and comes for the push, and he buys the Tom of Retraining for his like Archimage for Blizzard, and you can no longer retrain for Mana Burn. Uh, or you're playing against Orc, and also like you sometimes got to retrain to Mana Burn, and he's retraining from Hex to Serpent Wards, and you need now Mana Burn to Mana Burn Shadow Hunter, and you can't do so. So that change I welcome, but this one um, I'm not quite exactly sure to be honest. Like it, 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 it's might be a lot, might be a lot. It might be actually very big in terms of this one, but I don't know yet. Crystal Ball moved level 3 to level 2. I wonder if they changed the price for the Crystal Ball. That's kind of the first thing that I'm comes to my mind. so sure they did not. Oh, yeah. If I pass <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, but now, like, you could get a ring plus 4. That's super useful, uh, right? Like, if you're going for the harass. Or you could get a Crystal Ball. And now you could just, you know, do double scouting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, uh, I think Crystal Ball would better be at level 3, but uh, maybe it might give some mini night vision effect to a hero that's like carrying it. What if we give it like some vision effect, so hero has uh, his like vision ability is expanded during day or night time. Uh, maybe some kind of, you know, that passive like s uh, all ultra vision for every race. I, I, I could see something like that maybe if we, we need to rework the crystal ball because mm -hmm. Of course, like it's different if you get close plus nine or like plus eight right now, okay? Or we get a crystal ball. It's like two different games. I um, checked it just now, by the way. Crystal ball has a gold value of 150, so they did change it. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. Well, I mean, yeah, but maybe the, the item definitely does not belong to level two because we're trying here to like mitigate those level two items with like removed circlet, nerfed claws, uh, the ring might maybe need to be addressed as well. But then we're getting like this just item that does exactly nothing besides the fact that you could scout like maybe against Blade Master if like you're playing human and Orc is uh, also like used to work at Blizzard and still like you know smoking uh, and he is taking Blade Master and comes for harass and now human could like. Uh, reveal the blade. That's that's the only probably like yeah, but use of the, the item. The issue with that is that it doesn't stay revealed. It's just the th two or three seconds where the scan is working. It's not like a dust. Uh, true, true. But uh, I, I feel like you know if you're creeping some camp with like that brand new militia uh, and like you don't want the blade to steal your item or anything of this nature, yeah. like that that's the case. I I could see that you know being used. Otherwise, like you're getting now, you creep few camps, you get three crystal balls yeah. and you have that stacked blade master with those three crystal balls or stacked demon hunter that already looks dangerous just by the amount of balls he has and uh <laughs> uh that's how it feels uh other than that like um i i'm always like concerned that we're making so many changes at the same time overall like uh only god knows like the spirit walker buff how it's gonna be on a night elf uh what I see here is uh, Night Elf on that matchup is not getting addressed. Like Night Elf got a tiny bit nerf on talents. I see like that's a good, uh, probably good direction to go for. Uh, but then like again, like no timings change, no skull uh, changes, and of course, uh, what I wanted to talk here is in Rubian Tower. Um, I actually came up with an idea which I want everybody to know because I think that's really brilliant. If we change Nerubian Tower damage uh, to magic, the type. Therefore, it would start hitting 200% against footman and water elementals because UD human matchup is problematic uh, instead of changing the cooldown. What if we do change in terms of the magic type uh, and then we reduce the slow and leave it to one second as it hits right now? Uh, I feel like this could be very useful against human because now it is still like undeads. I feel like they have those two meta strategies and looking like happy games. One games he's fast expanding, others he used to just take Lich and go straight cross map uh, to try to slow down the human player. And I feel like this magic damage change 
make the UD fast expansion more reliable and better versus human where they need. On the same hand, kind of uh, reducing the amount of devastation a Night Elf hero gets or archers get, and also like reducing the tower rush potential because again, like it's still like a viable strategy on certain maps. Uh, so that's like my idea that I want to propose here for like everybody to discuss it. Uh, but other than that, like uh, I could see some things getting changed. Uh, I think they, yeah, they said that like we're gonna be monitoring and making changes until uh, the end of November. So I hope Rowland would not be affected, and it's still gonna yes. be probably on the current patch, yes. just because you know who knows what do we get. Uh, like if meta changes right before Rara, Ra it's just. Not too cool, not Absolute too cool, guys. Chaos. Like, you know, too many changes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. My feedback for now, and I will maybe come up with some more stuff a tiny bit later. Very good input. Very good feedback, as always. Uh, chat is saying, um, you could tower push the orcs with that n n narrow tower change? Uh, well, I mean, if orcs... Ah, uh, yeah, they're playing Blade now, so you could potentially go for Lich first. But problem is, Orc UD was a headhunter getting back probably, and I hope was like Frenzy, tiny bit tweaked and nerfed. Uh, I think Orc UD is going to be very much stable, and uh, I don't think this strategy, like Orc, has better potential with certain base layouts of beating this because uh, the tower push as a strategy, is not meant to finish the game. I, I feel like a lot of UD players, they're just going for like all-in version, like as many Nerubian Towers as they could. Uh, but uh, if you play like the 120s way, who's like a strategical genius in my uh, eyes, uh, you just need to like waste completely, uh, dry the Moon Juice, win some time, and then once there is no Moon Juice left, a Demon Hunter cannot heal. Just expand on Tier 2 and then Tier 3, Time and Push, and I feel like uh, that's exactly what makes it so powerful against Night Elf. If you play it correctly, like correct timings, correct execution, uh, and you do not try to finish the game, but rather you buy a lot of time with it. Uh, so for Orcs, uh, I never seen so far even like you know lately at least uh getting them getting tower rushed but uh i'm pretty sure that like there there are some counterways you just build a war mill headhunters uh like demolishers towers i, th I think black work has good sustain there but we we're gonna see i don't know i'm I cannot know for for the future, so whatever whatever it's gonna be, let let it be. <laughs> let it be. All right, dude. Thank you so much, and we see each other soon. Uh, at the very least, when the next iteration drops, and you'll be on the call again. Absolutely. Thank you so much, <laughs> Neil, for having me. Take much care, luck. dude. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, that's it with the open mic night. We've spent three hours once again, an hour less than before, uh, but it was not too much to discuss, but interesting for sure. Um, we talked about the initial response and tomorrow we have another talk where uh, me and Dondo and Save Orcas will talk about what are the issues in, like, from our vision, what are the current issues in pro play in the matchups, a little bit quality of life stuff and how we would address it. So um, it, I can tell it goes far away from what Blizzard is proposing. Um, the boys are working on it as we speak. So yeah, if you like this, give us a thumbs up. If you like any uh, argument or any proposal in uh, particular, write them down. And tell us what you think about the PDR patch notes and come up with your own feedback. Gotta say, the Night Elf Discord is doing a very good job with Account Create and Razor Moon both, giving uh, great feedback. We've also seen someone on Reddit uh, translating what Ted had to say about this. Uh, we had Scars on for some voice calls. That was pretty good, always. But I feel like a lot of players who are very vocal if someone else comes up with feedback, uh, don't put in the time or effort to come up with their own feedback. So I would love to see more of that on the socials, the reddits, the YouTubes of the world. And until then, thank you very much for the support. Once again, thank you CN, Buttcrumbs, uh, Lonely Driver and Lucky Me Hardcore. 
Oh, Chuddy comes in. Oh, Chuddy knows a lot about Warcraft and he highlights me. That must be important. Okay, Chuddy says, There is a lot of confusion about collision size. In melee, there are only three unit sizes. The difference between 32 and 40 matters only for hitboxes and attack range, not for unit size. A bomb 40 will be the same size as a knight tier 1 ranged heroes. Hmm. That's not too great, I guess then. Same as knights is not what we want, eh? Okay, then we have to figure out what editor and the value to change so we get what we want, and that is a less clumsy abomination. Um, okay. Some people that are a lot smarter about Warcraft 3 mechanics can help us out, I guess. There is no way because there's a jump from medium to large. So bear is also medium. If I get this correctly. Hmm, that's annoying. All right, uh, okay. I don't have a fix for that at the moment. And I'm hungry. But it's good to know. And that should be on the forums. I hope you make a post about it somewhere. So... Yeah. Huh. Damn. Uh, thank you for the input. Also, Lemes coming in with the Pally Rifle expertise and everyone else who was on. Good discussion. More of that tomorrow.